Brown Incubus, Megalomaniac, as uh, we say good morning to everybody. Jim Norton is back in town. What's up, Jimmy? Yes, I am. I was away doing my gigs. I'm happily back. Happily back. How were the shows? Awesome. Very good. Yeah, really good nice. to hear. It was a lovely trip. Uh, all the crowds that came out were very good. Yeah. I'm enjoying this one very much. They're, they're nice people. They really are. They've are been you running into some nice people out there? Only nice people. I've had, I've had no shitheads. A right. um, couple of drunks, but that's to be expected. Right. I had a, oh, I had a weird fan interaction in the restaurant. Um, first time in probably ever. Hmm. That uh, what I was happened? Kenny and I forgot about this. Remember, I said there was something I was thinking of. This was it. yeah, yeah. Me and Kenny and Kelsey after um, the Foxwood show, which right. was phenomenal. We're sitting there, and I I see a fan, and he comes over and he says hello while I'm sitting there eating. And normally I wouldn't have to do that to somebody, but I, he's a fan. I said hello, thanks for coming over. Did he sit down? No, no. He, but he leaned over for a minute. I think he was a little tipsy. Yeah. And then another guy from his table, a few minutes later, set, came over, and he's standing there, and he goes, Jim. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, man. And he hands me a note. And uh, I have a photocopy of the note. That I'll read. It's nothing big, but this is, this is the level of drunkenness that they were uh, doing. It said, hold on, I photocopied this gem. Did you tweet out the note? No. Um, no? I, I actually forgot to. Because while other guys are getting fucking... You know, girls' phone numbers and all that stuff. I, I get a note. I, I can't find it. I photographed it. It just said, Doug loves Monster Rain or, or something like that. It was, oh, here it is. Yeah. Uh, Dustin Hart, you, Monster Rain with two teardrops. And he just hands it to me and stands there. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you. Yeah. And then, um,. So we're eating, and we hear them piping up over there. Once a couple of times, they're going like, Norton! <laughs> they're having fun, you know. Right. And Kenny's like, these guys are going to be, they're not going to stop. I'm like, ah, they're all right. They're going to be a problem. But the guy came over again, and he was so drunk. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm eating. And he, he leans over and goes, Jim, we're going to a strip club in Rhode Island. Do you want to come? And I'm like, no, man, I can't. I'm like, I got to, we're going to bed. I got to, yeah, you got a very tomorrow. busy, busy schedule. And I said to him, I'm like, I'm eating. I, yeah. it's like, Dude, come on. Yeah. Um, but I said, get, you know, have a safe trip, drive safely. Yeah. It's like, I wish the guy a safe trip. All right. And then the other guy fucking comes back a few minutes later. It's like, they're just being obnoxious at this point. So uh, I'm like, dude, can you let me just let me eat? I, I got like annoyed. And I normally ever, never snap his shorts. Sure. But it's like, you know, twice when I'm eating, it's like, come on, dude, what the fuck? So then they would get, I guess, loud at their table, and man management would come over to us and go, do you want us to do anything? Right. And I was like, eh, they're having fun. We're leaving soon. It's not like it's, a, you know. Yeah. And then, uh, so I guess management went over and talked to them, and I don't know if management threw them out or they just left, but the guys, well, the one guy's walking out, he's going, I'll never go to another show again. <laughs> like, go oh, fuck yourself. Jesus. It was nice to you, dickhead. Right. Like, the manager came over, and he's like, do you want me to do anything? I'm like, no, it's not a big, <laughs> like, what do you want? Right. Like, well, and, I'm, and I've bothered people for photos. It wasn't even for a photo. It was like literally I'm eating and the guy just comes over and just leans down. Well, people are excited to see uh, little Jimmy Norton out I there on the road. I didn't mind that and I was very honest. I'm always happy. When people are happy to see me, I always take it very, very respectfully. Like, it's I'm nice, always right? Yeah. It's a nice feeling you, you get. But they were yelling uh, during that while they were eating, and it, it became more than them just being nice. I would imagine when they woke up the next day, they probably felt a little bad. Like, oh, oof. No, they're probably like, fuck him. Oh, really? Yeah, you sure. You think they're still in the fuck him? One of the guys probably is. The other guy didn't seem angry. Right. But I'm like, I'm sorry if I'm eating, and like by the second time you come over drunk, well, what I'm like, you, dude, I'm eating. What do you think they wanted? I don't think they wanted A little anything. more interaction? I don't think they knew what they wanted. Because when I, the, well, the first guy I talked to in the bathroom. Yeah. Like the first guy. So I talked to him twice already, too. I yeah. talked to them both at least twice. Right. I don't think they knew what they wanted, because they came over... And I was nice, and I talked, and they didn't ask for a photo. They didn't, of course, didn't stand online with the fans for a photo. Mm -hmm. Or uh, so there was there was nothing that they asked for that I didn't give them. But the guy that came over and wanted me to go to a strip club in Rhode Island, and I'm like, I can't. I'm, I'm uh, your schedule's so busy that you literally could not do that. You guys were pretty much traveling right after all these shows all weekend long, right? Yeah, I wouldn't have anyway. I mean, it was nice of them to ask, but I mean, I, I was like, you know, I'm just I'm. It was late. I had done a show, well, sold a bunch of merch, and talked to people. And well, they wanted to bring you to a strip club and get you some lap dances. And uh, I don't know if that's what you, he wanted. Get you all liquored up. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I watched me relapsing. Was a problem. Do a few bumps in the bathroom off a toilet. That may have been. <laughs> that's probably what they were looking for. Maybe they don't even know you're sober. Yeah, they don't. Maybe uh, they really wanted to show you a good time. 
And then the guy walks by again. Again? I got, I got so, I got f- really angry. Yeah. Um, because uh, Durham, he walks by outside the restaurant. He's like pacing. Right. And I'm like, what, what are you fucking? And it, it was so angry, angering because I'm like, I just can't picture doing that to someone I like. Yeah. Um, who, and he, who was pacing? The one that gave you the note the or the other guy? No, the other guy. Okay. Um, who I think was drunk. And there was someone yelling during Kelsey's set. Um, this was at Foxwoods. So I, I think that he was probably the same guy. And, um, he's, he yells to me, he goes, Dane Cook gets more pussy than you. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I, I said that on stage. As I'm looking, I'm asking for single women and it's all guys. I was saying how great it must be to Dane, to yeah. be Dane, a fucking single women show right. on your show. So he basically yells at me with one of my lines. That, that's <laughs> hilarious. Well, you should have said, I get more trannies. Uh, yeah, I, I think that goes without saying. Well, although I think you might get more pussy than Dane Cook. You, um, you just get it a different way. I, I pay for it. Um, well, that's why I was being yes. a little nice about it. Well, I actually have it in a while, so I've been kind of, I've been on a real dry spell, believe it or not. Yeah. Not, uh, I've been a very good slash dry boy. Well, I think you gotta start showing your, your pubes on Instagram like Dane Cook, and then you can get more pussy, Jimmy. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I've heard Dane was, uh, let's say, hooking up with some extremely high end young ladies. High end? Uh huh. What does that mean? Just uh, well-to-do okay. um, girls. I don't know if he's talked about it uh, publicly or not, so I, I don't want to say publicly because it's not my place Well, to. you're sort of saying it. Well, I, I can't say who, though. He's taking a lot of uh, very uh, shirtless selfies. Dane's in shape, and he would like everyone to know it. Well, <laughs> Dane's in damn good shape. I think a lot of us are, mo- you know, a lot of us that know Dane Cook are kind of mocking him for some of his Instagram photos, but... God, you got to give it to him. He's holding that, a football. That boy is in good shape right there. I, I just think you got to make, you got to keep your pubes out of your pictures. I'm thinking. I, I don't. I think if you you're should a guy. Keep, keep them out of your life. You, you don't need them. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't have any pubes down there. But I'm in no position. Here's why. I'll tell you why. I'm in That's no position. That's a football position. picture, right? It is. Yeah, he's a football fan. All right, he's holding up a football and uh, a very, uh, very nice body on Dane Cook. But then, ah, it's a, he should have cropped it a little bit because it's the top, of, uh, the top of his pubes. Dane in his uh, shirt, no shirt, looking good. Gets uh, you get over nine thousand likes. Yeah, I have a nice picture. Sully came to one of the shows in Boston. Nice. Me and Kelsey. Yeah. I got a thousand likes. That's pretty good, though. And that's not good. Me and William <laughs> Shatner they have a nice heart to heart. Right. I get a thousand likes. That's pretty good. Dane's dick is almost showing. He has almost ten thousand <laughs> likes. So I have to tip my hat to him. Please do a uh, Dane Cook uh, style picture on Instagram. I can't please. do it. If I was in good enough shape, I would do it in a second. I just do it, can't do, do it. Do the football picture, please. I'm not in good enough shape. We'll, we'll uh, tweet out the football picture from Dane Cook. I, but, if I could pull that off, I would do it, and I wouldn't care what anybody said, because girls would want to suck my dick. I, I like Dane Cook. I have no problems with Dane Cook, but uh, a few of us have noticed that the, the pictures are getting... Well, yeah, look at the other one, where he's crotched down. Well, you just had it. Ah, where is it? There's another one where he's completely nude, but he's, but he's situated. Is he really? Yeah, right oh there. Oh my god! He's completely nude. He's, it's in black and white, so I want to know who's taking these. Well, it's a, it's an artsy photo. Yeah, uh, it looks like uh, from his house out there in Hollywood. That's a damn good house, and, Jesus. And he's crotched all the way down, so that covers up his penis. I'm gonna start taking but, some of them. But you see, a, you see a big, uh, well, not a big, Jesus, his uh, butt cheek, his left butt cheek is, is in full display. He's in great shape. Yeah, he he wrote. Uh, I took a break from clothing today. That's uh, almost seven thousand likes. He's walking around naked like fucking like the guy from Ten to Midnight who killed people. <laughs> yeah, fucking Dan's gonna go on a spree and start knifing people. <laughs> That's very good. I know that one. So, uh, well, besides that, this show sounded like they were good. It was awesome, and and that show was good. Even the guys, if they were the ones yelling during the show, they were being a raucous, but they weren't being nasty. They were just being oh, people. But the are... guy got really. It's people get really weird when they're drunk. Like, and I know how that is. But it was like, what did you want me to do? Like, I was nice to you when you came over. A right. lot of guys get mad if you bother. Them. Like, I don't even bother people when they're eating. And I love taking photos. Yeah. I don't even do that. But you, you, your guy came over twice. And then you came over. Like, like what did you want me to do? Yeah, I don't I know. I wasn't trying to be a jerk to you. I was happy you came to the show. I thanked you for coming to the show. And, and it's uh, it's late at night. You're trying to eat some food. And then you guys yeah, are going to, uh, yeah. I think you're going to drive to the next gig. That's sort of what your schedule's been, right? Yeah. You yeah. guys, excuse me. You guys have been driving in the middle of the night to the next uh, the next city. That one we actually stayed over at Foxwoods because uh, the next gig was I did a, a state uh, Connecticut State University. Isn't that very stu- close to Foxwoods? Yeah, it's an hour away. 
So, um, and then it's in, in 90 minutes from the city. Right. And I went to, but the, I, the hotels there had some bad reports. Uh. So I didn't want to stay in any of the whole, there was a couple of bed buggy reports. Oh. Yeah. Kenny is, does due diligence and checks out that there's no bed bugs. The bed bug registry, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they were very, they were also another lovely, uh, show. Good, okay. Good crowds. There was another Dane Cook photo. Let's get back to the Dane Cook photo. Well, there's one where he's completely naked. He's not He's not hiding anything, but then the sun is coming through the oh. window and blasts out his penis. So you can't see his penis. Like, he's in great shape. I mean, what, you know, what, look at that one. That's got 7,400 <laughs> likes. So wow. We can say what we uh, want about it, but Dane's dick almost being shown. Dane's dick being blocked out by the sun yeah, he's has more likes than my last eight photos in a <laughs> yeah, row. He's doing a, he's doing a split with his left leg up on the wall. He's completely naked. And you should be able to see his dick and pubes in that one, but the sun is shining through the window, and it, it kind of blocks it out. Very artsy. Very yeah. an artsy shot. Although I'll say if Mr. that was Dane me, Cook. my cock would never oh. be blocked by the sun. There you go. My cock would fucking dangle way below where the sun was. There you go. People would be like, that fucking sun can't even hold a candle to Jim's dick. <laughs> <laughs> we got a guy that went to the Foxwood show, and he might have sat next to this guy you're talking oh, about. Oh, okay. Let's see. Dave in Connecticut, go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi, Good morning, Dave. Dave. I wanted to start. Kelsey was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, she's great. Her before I l- abs- we loved her. Absolutely loved her. Uh, we were a couple rows in front of it. It was the same guy that was yelling during her set that was yelling during yours. He was yelling like Monster Rain, right? Yeah, Monster yeah. Rain. And he kept telling Kelsey, take it off and all that stuff. Yeah. I think when she called him a Subway sandwich artist, <laughs> uh, she just laid into him. And Jimmy was just just freaking hilarious. Thank you, dude. Down. Yeah, that was such a good show. Maybe um, it was one of his first comedy shows. He didn't know how to behave. Yeah, maybe. Co- he just junk, junk asshole, really. Colin Quinn had a good joke about that. He was talking about, like, he walked up to into the comedy cellar, and a comedian that he didn't know or something, a newer comedian, yeah. like, gave him the finger, like, saying hello. Yeah. And the guy who was with the comedian said to Colin, and he goes, ah, you gotta give him a break. He doesn't know how to act. Yeah. And Colin's like, well, even if he doesn't know how to act, if you had to guess, yeah, why yeah, would that right. be the, it was <laughs> such a fucking good joke. <laughs> but that's like, the thing is, if you had to guess how to act at a comedy show, how would it, it wouldn't be to yell. Yeah. But again, drunk people, I give a certain pass to, because I get that they're just fucked up, and that's not really who they are. If you're the only one yelling and screaming yeah. in the audience, then yeah, maybe you're the, you're the problem. I don't know. Yeah. All right, Dave. Thank you, buddy. No problem. I just want to say again, the best show and the combo of you and Kelsey were just, you guys were now at it. Thank you. Yeah, I love that show. I appreciate you uh, you being there. Thank you. All right. I have uh, Red Bank coming up, and uh, Long Island has been sold out for a long time, and uh, Red Bank and Montclair, and we're showing UFC at the end of Montclair. The uh, there's like it's, it's it's all selling really well this area. Yeah. So they just they're doing it. Uh, I guess hoping to get like a little bit of bar at the end. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like That's people smart. stay after the show and drink. So uh, so you'll be hanging out watching UFC. I with really the fans. want to hang out and watch the Conor McGregor fight with yeah. the, with the fans at the end. That's uh, great. I'll sell some merch and come back in and watch the fight. I think I want to go to that one. You do. You, you I, have I think to. I want to go to that one and check out the UFC. I, or, although the Paramount would be awesome. You're going to love the Paramount out there in Huntington, March 4th. I am. We, that's been sold, sold out, out for a while. So that's been sold. We should have done a second show there, but I think you know, once in a while I'll leave them one more. <laughs> you're going you're to love those people. They run a really good joint out there in Huntington. And it's uh, it's uh, just a mere uh, few steps away from F.H. Riley's. Maybe I'll go in the My afternoon. My brother's uh, have a restaurant out there. That's yep. on a Friday. Th- well, that's a Friday afternoon. So I'm going to go out there early because to get to Long Island, we uh, you, you don't want to go... At five thirty or six, mm-hmm. so maybe we'll go out there, uh, you know, three or four o'clock and have and have some dinner, have a little din din. Yeah, why not? I'd go there. I'd, I'd go to FH Riley's and then head over to the gig. I want to eat first. Let me uh, let me know so I can give my brother a heads up. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, speaking of MMA, I freaking loved the Dada five thousand Kimbo slice fight. We had Billy Corbin uh, call in on on uh, Friday. Okay. Because, you know, uh, we all know Dada 5000 from the dogfight documentary. Right. And, uh, he didn't, w- he didn't really want to pick anyone. Remember, Paul? He would not pick a winner in this fight. And, uh, we got Mars in studio. You love, you love MMA. You, do you like Bellator? Is it Bellator? How do you say that? Bellator. Bellator? Yeah. Bellator, yeah. It's, Bellator? It's, it's a lot of, oh, yeah, with an O. It's an, a lot of Bellator. older fighters go there. I, I, I haven't watched a lot of their uh, their stuff over the years, but I was tuning in for the Dada 5000 Kimbo Slice fight, and you, you were looking at two extremely out-of-shape guys. 
This right? Genuinely, they're a little out of shape and tough guy. They just—I t- heard Dinah had to lose f- f- forty pounds 40. to get down to weight to get down to two sixty-five. Yeah, so, so he had low potassium, high potassium, and something like that. They said he was probably very dehydrated from losing the forty pounds. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was laughing my ass off, and then I didn't think it was that funny when I learned that I guess Dada five thousand's heart stopped at the end of this fight for a while. Well, did you watch him in three minutes or something? I watched in that the round. whole damn thing, dude. He why he just wandered away and fell like that's yeah. a guy who fought. He could not fight anymore. But they weren't really fighting. They were just holding each other and uh, just kind of... They were just trying to survive. Yeah. It should be on, no? It was... You know, it there was, you are. Yeah, I am. It was boring uh, as hell, Oops. It wasn't a Damn. great fight. They're both hard-hitting guys. They're tough guys. I, but it just seemed like to, to fight on that level... It um, wasn't boring because it was such a shitty fight. <laughs> That's what made it so great. These guys could not punch after the nope. first round. Nope. They couldn't connect. And when they did connect, they, they were exhausted. Solid. That's why it was great. Look at how tired this Dada yes. guy is. I mean, this is, I mean, I, isn't it weird? Like, even though he's that tired, he can still beat me up pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought Kimo Slice was this uh, scary monster. He didn't come across like that in this fight, Mars, right? No, no he didn't. How old is he? He's in his 40s, right? He's He's got to be up there now, but... I would assume at least mid. The ref should have stopped it. Big John MacArthur should have stopped it right there when he was when he was just walking with his chin laying on Kimbo's fucking <laughs> tricep <laughs> yeah, but, and walking across the ring. That's probably where you stop it. Like, uh, wow. And then, but Kimbo, even though, but Kimbo couldn't get any punches going, even though nothing. Dada had nothing. The fatigue kills you, man. Yeah, th- th- these guys are very tired. They're big heavyweights. They're big fucking two sixty five is a yeah. big guy, man. But they barely punched it out in the first round, Jimmy. They were holding most of the first That's round. That's what it was, is that each one of them leaning on each other with all that weight. Right. Like, what, two, what is it? 265, 265, and I don't know how much Kimbo weighs. They just tired themselves out. I was laughing. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then when I heard Dada 5000 had all sorts of medical issues after that fight, it was certainly wasn't as funny. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't know that at the time. Dude, these are guys who used to fucking, who, who used to talking to you in a parking lot and then fucking yeah. dealing with your chin in a parking lot. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? One fucking blast to the face or two shots. You know, even guys like that, it's hard for them to take one of their, the other guy's punches square on the jaw. Mm-hmm, sure. Then I used to put on gloves and have to entertain people for <laughs> fucking three rounds with cameras. Yeah. Then the guys have fought since 2011. Donna 5000 hasn't fought since 2011. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he really wants to fight. Because he had opportunities after after that whole dogfight documentary, and he he's only fought twice professionally. I think that's what they said, right? Yeah, but he was talking a lot, wasn't he? Talking a lot of shit. He was talking a lot of shit. So well, was Kimbo Slice. Was, was, they were both there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, Kimbo Slice. Uh, he he technically shouldn't get a win because he didn't do anything to win that fight either. Nope. It was won. just that Dada, like, just passed out. He just passed out in the ring. That was a street fight. Yeah. That yeah. Was a street fight. Uh, does that help uh, help or hurt Bellator? Uh, Bellator. Sorry, Bellator. Hurt. Also, because of that other fight too, uh, Shamrock and uh, Gracie. Gracie. That was. That wasn't that good. I no. turned I turned it off after the Dada five thousand. I was I, ready to go to bed. I made a mistake. I told you a few seconds only because it was uh, over two, two minutes. Right. But those two minutes, they were just pawing and moving and pawing. And then when they actually touched each other, seconds later, they stopped it because of a knee strike. So wait, that, to the that, groin. that stopped the fight. Yeah. The, the uh, actually no. That, uh, Gracie uh, need him in the balls. He went down. You need him to the right of his balls. Is that the one? Right. And then when he went down, he started hammer fisting him. And then that's when McCarthy thought it should be stopped. Right. Oh. And then Shamrock stood up. You know, the whole drama thing. Every should fucking it have been fight. stopped? I don't know. And this is I, I. I gave up on these two men. It's like well, every, you should give well, up. Older they're guys, very yeah. old. They had great careers. They're older guys now, right? Yeah. Then again, you know what? No, that's the right move to stop it. There's only like six or seven fights, but Gracie wasn't doing anything to stop it. He just kind of had his arms. I mean, uh, uh, Shamrock. Shamrock. Yeah, yeah. So as far as the ref knows, he can't, he's not fucking defending himself. Yeah, one, two, two three, four, five, five yeah, he, six. He course, has six straight hammer fists to that. the face, and the guy's not stopping it. Like, you have to. You don't know if he's fucked up. No. He's like a knee to the temple. Oh, did he? Right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll fucking do some damage, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I didn't see, I watched a little bit of the, of the, uh. You didn't see the Dada 5000? No, I saw some of that one in, was, in the hotel. I was entertained by that, cause I couldn't, be- <laughs> they were just lumbering around, exhausted. It was the weirdest thing, you'd never see that in the UFC. Shit, throwing karate chops. 
<laughs> you think Dana White's happy that that, that went oh, down like that? Oh, he yep. loved it. Because yep. in the UFC, you never see guys just lumbering and, and losing energy and passing out in the ring like that. Yeah, they're conditioned to fight. These guys didn't condition themselves. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, Dana was quite enjoying that. So, all right. Well, uh, he gave Kimbo a slice. I mean, he gave him a, a shot. You know, he put him in and tried to... Yeah, it just didn't work out. Follow us on uh, Twitter. We'll show you that. We'll show you a dot five thousand literally falling down from nothing. The, there was no punch before that, right, Mars? I don't. I don't think there was a punch. No, he was, was walking he connected around. a couple of times, but I'm, I assure you, listen. I think that's when his heart was stopped. Not to talk shit, but you give me a guy that like that, that fatigued, I'll beat his ass. You're gonna beat dot five thousand. That fatigued. That fatigued. That tight. Ty- that again, tight. If he saw a guy he's your size coming in, you, he's, he dude. would he'd muster up enough strength to throw one hard shot at you, <laughs> and he'll miss. I'll duck. Maybe. Oh, yeah. That's but if he connected, you'd be in trouble. Oh hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I'll see them coming. I what's know. The, what's the latest on Dada? Is he all right? He seems to be all right. Oh, all right. Res- but his heart stopped. Yeah, they resuscitated him in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So his he had his heart was stopped. stopped. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. I hope he's done fighting now. He of course a, he's done fighting. He, heart I, stops. It looks like he doesn't really want to do that. I think he just wants to be a promoter. Because he got a lot of heat after, like I said, dog fight, and he, and he really wasn't fighting after, after that. Yeah, you got to condition yourself. Among condition, Also, on top of conditioning is your nerves and anxiety when you're fighting and someone's trying to knock your fucking head off, man. And the stress that's involved takes sure. a toll on you. Sure. Yeah, I deal with that all the time. I understand. Yeah. That's what I do. Yes, I do. I've been taking some karate. <laughs> <laughs> taking some karate Remember lessons, in high school, that was the thing. Fucking guy, every time there's a Korean kid in a fight, like, I think he knows karate. Oh, God, There was yeah. no MMA in high, no. in high school. No fucking, you, no one really fought judo. I mean, it, was, it existed, of course, but no one really fought it that I knew. It was all karate. We were scared to fight Asian kids growing oh, up. Oh, yeah. You just assumed every Asian kid uh, knew karate. And uh, and Whitey wasn't really getting into karate that when we were growing up. Not as much as they certainly do today. But you know who exploited them? The brothers. The brothers? The brothers who kicked their ass with their boxing. What, they realized that the Asian oh, kids yeah. didn't Asians know karate? Can't fight. They can't fight. I never I remember that. I didn't. Yeah. I grew up in a very white high school. Martin. Thank God. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember any. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't remember any any, any uh, black guy, Asian guy. Yeah, there weren't that many black guys in my school. So. But the black guys would just outbox them. Oh, outbox them, man. Boxing, even is though a, they would go in that karate stance, brother, that wouldn't t- scare the brothers. Let me tell you, boxing is a lethal martial art. You know, boxing, you could fuck a motherfucker. Up. What about a fucking spinning uh, kick? <laughs> if you're a good boxer, you see it coming. You see it coming a mile away. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, they're great. All right, but boxers don't really know how to use their feet. Right, but a good boxer will never allow you to get him to the ground. Were you entertained by Tyson's commentary? Oh, yeah, I love Tyson. He was, he was great. Was he drunk? He, he was having fun, wasn't he? He was having he was a happy. blast. <laughs> he was very happy. They had uh, Tyson. He oh, was, he was commenting? He was commenting on one of the fights, and he was hilarious. Yeah, he was loving it. I, was... I, I should have told the guys to grab some of that audio today. He was very entertaining. But Twitter was wondering if he was under the influence. Mm. I didn't hear any of it. It, like was, it, was, it was good. Like I said, I only watched because I'm friends with Billy Corbin and and, uh, you know, Dada's from that whole dogfight thing, and we had Billy on. He got me excited to watch this thing, and I wasn't disappointed. I tell you, uh, Bellator started to pull some fighters away from UFC, and, and why that is is because of the, um, the Reebok mm-hmm. is sponsoring uh, UFC, and their fighters can only make so much right. when you have that one sponsor. So okay. when they go what to do Bell- you mean? Reebok, they have, you have to wear all Reebok when you're in UFC now. Do you really? Yes. But you can't can wear, wear anything your own, else. No Nike. No, you know, nope, all, nope, nope, you, nope. you can't fight in their cage with anything else. Yep. So that's and hurting you some of the fine, big time. And they're, so that's hurting some of the fighters, so they're going to Bellator because right. they can wear their own stuff. And they can make more money. Right. So let me ask you a question, though. What if, you're, what if Nike wants to sponsor you personally? You can't wear it in the ring. I doubt it. I but does Reebok so. have to pay you to wear their stuff in the ring? There must be some kind of yes, payment but for it's, the fighters. Yeah, it is, but it's low. Oh, okay. oh, wow. They can make a lot more money when they're, you know, in Bellatar with yeah. other sponsors. Did you no, find no. a good Tyson clip? This one's okay. All right, let's just try it. On Campos knockout. Oh, no, it was Roland fighting? Yeah. I think get knocked out. What was it? It was, it was, it was, it was two stairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roland versus two stairs. Jesus. <laughs> Don't, it wouldn't surprise me. Melvin Glover works the body. He has great body attacks. Well, this guy. Oh. Oh, he looks like he's camping out. Oh, camping Campos out. Campos gets another one through. Melvin oh, Gillard in a world of hurt. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? Which way did he go? A Mike Tyson-like oh. finish. Beautiful. 
beautiful shots by Derek Campos. Oh, man. man. That was really resounding, so to speak. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I mean, that, I don't know if he's just drunk or if he's just fucking how he's just he's just, around. Yeah, he's just having a good time. Uh, that was a good fight, too, by the way. That Melvin Gillard's right. a fucking... I didn't know yeah. he left UFC, too. Yeah, that was that was, uh, that was was all right. And Tyson was fun to, to watch. So, all right. Anyway. Oh, thank you, Mars. That makes sense, the sponsorship. What do you thank think you. of your boy Trump oh, winning man. South Carolina? Kicking, Honestly, man, kicking Rubio and Cruz's ass. Ass is. He's going to be president. He's going to be president. It looks that way to me, man. It don't. Hey, listen. He's on a roll. I don't. I don't know uh, if he could be stopped. I don't think he could be stopped at this point as far as uh, getting the nomination. I hope not. Everything that we bring up that we say is going to fuck his thing up or he's going to stop. Nothing. 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 Nothing hurts him. He could say whatever. He gets. He gets in with. The, he gets into a situation with the Pope and that doesn't fucking hurt him whatsoever. That's <laughs> yeah. You know you're on a roll when you tell the Pope to go fuck himself and people are still with you in South Carolina. In South Carolina. In the South, they're still with him. There's a lot of religious people down there. <laughs> the Pope, he can eat my ass. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what do you know? Right. <laughs> They're hoping for Rubio. I mean, it's not going to be Cruz. They're hoping Rubio could do something. He had uh, he had a lot of people at his rallies yesterday or Rubio? over the weekend. Yeah, he had a lot of people. So don't count out this Rubio. But I, I don't think I don't think anyone stops Trump. And then what happens? Then what happens? I don't know. The, what do you think, Jimmy? I think he gets fucked out of it somehow. Somehow they yeah. say fuck this. Somehow, I, I don't think that he will be president. But it's not because I don't think that people that there's enough people that support him. I just don't think. I think something will happen, um, not physically against him. Just some technicality where he doesn't get the electoral votes or some shit they'll pull. Well, then what? I don't think they'll allow someone like him. To come in and take the top spot. Uh, Maybe I, I'm just being naive. But I don't think I, it will happen. I don't think uh, I don't think they have a choice because if they fuck with Trump and th then they just throw away their chances of even winning the White House this year, they may even be willing to do that. Really? Yeah. To to me, Trump winning is more dangerous to them. And I really I'm not being a paranoid guy, but it's more dangerous to them and this the system they have set up than Hillary winning, because she's one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's not a Republican. Rubio's a Republican. She's a Democrat. But they're mm -hmm. the same. They're the same fucking animal. They understand each other. They talk the same language. They think the same. Yeah. They debate the same. Oh, you voted for this, and I voted for that. But they both play the same... They play in the game. They play the game this similar way. Yeah. He doesn't. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's much different... Um, from Rubio than Hillary is. She's more sil similar to fucking Ted Cruz or Rubio than Trump is. I don't care what their politics are. Yeah, the so personally, I think that he will somehow be pushed out because all of them together are stronger and sneakier than he is. I would, uh, I'd rather have uh, Trump over Rubio and Cruz. Yes. The more I, I, I watch this and, and learn about this whole thing, Rubio and Cruz scare the fuck out of me. I like that Kasich, too, but he doesn't have a shot, unfortunately. And uh, Ben Carson's staying in there. We're down to five, right? Yep. We got Rubio, Cruz, Trump, Kasich, and Ben Carson. Jeb Bush has uh, stepped down. Yeah, I don't blame him. It's time to go home. Did you see his uh, his goodbye? I did not. No. Oh God! <laughs> I did Play not see it. it. I feel so bad for the guy. I actually felt really bad for this guy. Uh, go ahead, play this. I'm proud of the campaign that we've run to unify our country. Already he has lost conservatives. Me. That was not a good campaign. <laughs> what he should have said is, my campaign has been filled with folly and shame. <laughs> that should have been his opening line. It's a complete... It's a complete embarrassment because he had so much uh, money behind him and so much support, and, yeah. and he couldn't get anything going. Trump hit him hard with that whole low energy thing, and he never survived that He thing. never did. He's a bit of a simp, I think, even though he may be a lovely man. I just, uh, I think people are a little tired of the last I, name. He couldn't get rid of the last name. They didn't want the last name this election. No one wants, it, which we've already had a couple of Bushes. But, it's time to move on. That's but all. He, he didn't uh, think twice about Trump early on when Trump was hitting him with the low energy and all that. And then he decided to start fighting back a little too late. You think a little uh, too late? You think having his mom and his that was embarrassing. No one wants their mom to help him out. It didn't mean anything. But what happened was, and this is why I said Trump is different, worse for them than Hillary. <laughs> 
because Hillary would never have exposed him like that. She might have exposed his politics or his voting, yeah. but she would not, or neither would Bernie. Yeah. They would not have exposed who this guy was. Yeah. Like, Trump just ripped his clothes off, and like, look at this naked simp. Yeah. And you're like, ugh. He, do, he doesn't have a feel for things, because, you know, I mean, when he brought his mom and, and his brother, the, it was so obvious they were so desperate, and they needed South Carolina, and I, I believe the old man won South, South Carolina, and his brother won the won South Carolina very easily. So they they were showing desperation by bringing you know the brother and the mom down there, and I think everyone like knew that if he brought his mom early in the campaign, then that would have been a different thing. But but just the well, she she showed up in New Hampshire obviously the, for the first time, but then went to South Carolina. Anyway, he just didn't have a, a real feel for this thing. Can you imagine how tr- how fucking a guy like Reagan would have handled Trump? I mean, a lot differently than Jeb Bush did. Sure, he would have addressed. It differently, yeah. he would have handled it with grandfatherly humor and dismissiveness. Yes, I, I was. I was watching an old uh, Reagan clip yesterday where he was yelling and screaming during the New Hampshire uh, primary. Could you find that was that? Howard Dean? Oh, <laughs> somehow he people. somehow he paid for something and they they. Oh no, she showed uh, up and it wasn't the girl from oh, the ad. I hear you. This is it. <laughs> I don't. It's sorry. I, I'm sorry, dude. It's full. I was trying to find this. And they leave. They don't. The fireworks begin. If, if we may have the first question for the question, you asked me if you could make an announcement first. Next year, I asked you for permission to make an announcement. Pause. Oh, this, this is really hard to hear. Bad quality. Yeah. If you can find a better quality, this it's from 1980, New Hampshire, and Reagan. Uh, I only I only saw uh, this halfway through last night when I was flipping around, but basically. He's yelling, I'm paying for the microphone. For some reason, they want him to leave or something, and he's yelling, I paid for this microphone. Was this before he was president? I don't know if anyone knows. New Hampshire, I'm guessing. Oh, no, yeah, it was before uh, 1980 in uh, New Hampshire primary. But if anyone knows the, you know, the, um, uh, what this clip is all about, please give me a call, because I only saw it halfway through. Tom Papa just walks in like that. Hi, Tom. Good morning, Tom. Hi, guys. Long time no see. I know. I missed you so much. We're looking. I missed you, sir. So good to see you. We uh, we're looking at an old uh, Ronald Reagan clip where he got very mad in New Hampshire. We're, Ooh. we're discussing Trump winning South Carolina. We're discussing uh, Jeb Bush uh, having to finally say goodbye. Oh, poor Jeb. I felt bad for him at that press conference or whatever the hell. <laughs> yeah, you call it. He's, he's he's a nice he's a nice man. But he never had a feel for this one. He had all the support and all the money behind him. I know. He spent a shitload of money, and he couldn't get anything going. The first time I saw him, I was just shocked. What do you mean? Because it's like, oh, Bush, and you know, he, he's run Florida, and he's, he, he looks more mature than his brother, who yeah. was president. Yeah. And then he started talking. You're like, oh, he's worse than the first one. Uh, yeah. Or the second oh, no, one. His, his brother has a lot of fucking personality. Absolutely. Totally charming. And, you know, a, uh, I mean, it's in a, in a different way, but he, he's yeah. very charming. Yeah. This, and when they brought just, him out in South Carolina and, and, and he went on to talk about his brother, he was hilarious. He, and then, and then Jeb got up there and he was just a dud after his good, brother. The, the worst was cl- please clap. No, oh, the police clock. I took that as a joke, though. I, I didn't take no, that as a big... No, he was so bummed out. He was sincere. No, he that's... Serious, absolutely, that was sincere. Yeah. Can I say that? I don't know. Travis he is really, agree, disagreeing with no, me, too. 100%. 100%. He really please thought he had, he thought he had a moment, and he's like, oh, please clap. That was the that was the applause break. And it was that. It was a frustration to it. He right. Was just he, thinking, he was so bummed <sighs> out. He just didn't see it. How do, how do you think It was think like this? a comedian being like... Uh, Maybe that's okay. where you laugh, Jim. How do you see this and so not know that he's so bummed out without backing it up? I think the next president needs to be a lot quieter, but send a signal that we're prepared to act in the national security interests of this country to get back in the business of creating a more peaceful world. Please clap. <laughs> no, he's kidding. They, they laughed. He's joking. Oh no, he, he man. wanted that moment. He There's no way. It. He punched it. That, that was supposed America. to be, and then he was like, "Ah, oh, nah, please, please." Fuck I mean, he was being authoritative about it, but he still wanted. He was a little he thought it was out. a moment. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but I took that because they laughed. They responded. With they're laughter. laughing at him. Well, yeah, they're they're laughing. No, they love not him with him. <laughs> they're laughing because they realize everyone realizes it's a moment now. 
in the wrong way. Um, I will stand Poor alone guy. on this one. I no will stand way, isolated. Man. I will stand an island unto myself you and say he was he, kidding. <laughs> he was bummed, though. He's like, ah, oh, please clap. Yeah, I felt bad for him. I've I, said I that like he after see. I was done fucking. Like, then I'm meaning it. I'm like, please clap. Please, please clap. clap. I I gave he you. does because it's over. I gave you my all there. Please clap. Good boy. Do we yeah. know the Reagan why he got mad during this Nashua moment back in 1980? Ah, uh, whatever. But well, you can go to the Jeb Bush thing. If we find out more info on that, that's. I want to hear Reagan yell though. I, was, I didn't. I didn't. Did you, you find a better? It gets a little clearer now. Okay. All right. Let's listen to this. He lost New Hampshire. I, I don't know. I, I was just flipping around last night, and they're showing this clip. I think it was on CNN. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Reagan getting all fucking pissed off uh, up there in New Hampshire right, back in 1980, and, and he's yelling, "I paid for this microphone, and I want to know what the, this clip's about. I never saw it before." Well, uh, well is this on? Mr. Green, did you turn that microphone off? You asked please? for me if you would. I am paying for this microphone, Mr. Green. Wow, Mr. Green. Uh, really got fucking cock slapped. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> I don't know. Is that a young Bob Dole? Yeah, it really is. Well, yeah. With two functioning functioning hands, and you didn't see the end where, where Fredo came in and he goes, "Ronald, you don't come to New Hampshire and talk to a man like Mister Green like that." <laughs> but the point is, you're looking at a leader. Yeah, you see how exactly. pissed off Reagan was in his eyes. That was real shit. Yeah, he wouldn't deal with Trump's crap. No, that they, he would. He would just no. handle it differently because he was again. He was a he was a stronger personality. I don't mean to say That's Trump's it. crap because I, I'm I'm loving that Trump's doing all this. Yeah, but you know, like if 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 this was a year where McCain or even Romney were around, Romney a, a, could a, yeah, handle Trump. Absolutely, a grown up. Yeah, he he did last. You Trump think? Trump was around. When Romney was around, and there, but there's just no one else in that field that is a grown up, that is authoritative, that is a strong leader. Mm -hmm. So he just keeps going. Right. There's nobody else. That's the problem. Rubio's too young. Cruz is too fucking insane. Yeah. So, uh, Bush is too timid. So, yeah, so you didn't have a guy that could really just go toe to toe with him. John McCain. Even Romney was just rational and looked like a leader, you know. Yeah, McCain Those guys, would put up with his shit. They, I, I they, don't know about Romney as much, but now Romney, well, you're right, is right. He was, he was like a big, handsome, yeah. fucking guy who's like a, he was like the leader of a, of a you know a company leader. Like he's one of those guys that yeah. you used to see him walk in and run shit. Totally. Jeb doesn't feel like he runs shit, even though I'm sure he's a smarter guy than we're giving him credit for. He really, it seems really like, just shows how blown apart that whole. Field is. He's just that's a, the problem. He just is a. He's just a very nice guy, Joe Bush. You could tell he's just a nice guy. Good guy, means solid well. guy. Did well in Florida. Nice. Means guy. well, but uh, go go to him saying I'm. He's done. I paid for this woman, Mister Green. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was Jim Reagan. <laughs> Jim Reagan. <laughs> Reagan wasn't having it. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, Jeb Bush drops out of the race. This is how it went down on Friday night. I'm proud of the campaign that we've run to unify our country and to advocate conservative solutions that would give more Americans the opportunity to rise up and reach their God-given potential. See, am I already, he's just boring <laughs> yeah, and just... Stuttering. I just, I hate the company fucking line. Yeah. These guys don't learn. It's not working. Yeah. Even if you hate Trump, fine. At least he's not giving you the company line. I no. know. He's speaking but, uh, his mind. He's not holding back. shit. And if it was Hillary, it'd be more shit. Just, it would just be the, the underside of this <laughs> shit. Yeah. Same thing. As we move We've said many times on this show, as we move forward, these uh, candidates uh, in, in upcoming elections, they're going to have to act more like Trump. They're not. They, you can't play it this way. You can't it's play hard, it like, though. I mean, it's hard. What you're you're asking them to be like a natural performer, and they're not. Like when Rubio like makes those jokes. Oh, I love oh, it. Is so there anything bad? Yeah. Oh, the water. Oh, that you was know. so great. So, but that was like me at the Apollo if I ever did it. <laughs> oh, here's one that the people will enjoy. A cricket. <laughs> a cricket. <laughs> but so when bad. Trump, but and when they, Trump goes away, we're not going to want to go back to this shit of these guys will, just in talking in sound bites and not saying much of anything. Yeah, but you know. No, that's I think the somewhere in between go. is where they're going to land. Well, that's why, like a Clinton or a Reagan, you know, or or Bush, they those guys 
kick ass because they there's something authentic and you feel it. And yeah, it's you know it's like taking a, a a new comic like these guys or new comics with a couple jokes and they spit them out and they right guys <laughs> and then all of a sudden someone just walks up there with who's just a like Bob Chappelle Kelly. or Bob yeah. Kelly. Yeah. You know what, dude? I'm smoking a cigar. I'm dude. relaxed and you're like this guy's comfortable. <laughs> right, exactly. A natural. Uh, we're we're not seeing the conspiracy with Trump and Clinton. Let's hear it. I would love to know. No, I don't. People have theorized on that. Oh, you're not roping a megalomaniac like Trump into a conspiracy to build, to get Hillary elected. <laughs> that's right. Not well, happening. Well, that's no why we started uh, with Incubus this morning. Ah, uh, I see the tie in. Uh, Richard in Florida, go ahead. Hey, all right, fellas. Uh, thanks for taking a call. Sure. You guys, are, you guys are old enough to remember what happened in 92 when Clinton uh, kept encouraging Ross Perot to uh, debate and run and all those dopes that ended up voting for Perot would have voted for the original George H. Bush. Now, being in the military, I can see that you can't really uh, kill or uh, hurt somebody unless you dehumanize them. Trump has gone to their wedding. They went to Trump's wedding. They played golf together. There was a secret phone call in May. Um, and de- Trump. How is it a secret yeah. phone call in May if you know about it? I was just going to ask the same. Uh, I, I mean, not to be a dick, but Richard in Florida knows about a secret phone call in May. You guys then it's not too it. secret. But uh, you didn't say the content of the call. But anyway. Hold on. We're guys- not going to let you slide on that. <laughs> What's the secret phone call? How do we find out about the secret phone call? I don't know. I heard about it on your fucking show, man. You just- we talked about the secret <laughs> phone call. <laughs> but anyway. No. Man, they, See, that's the conspiracy the stuff. You throw it out there, but there's no... Ignored. What do you mean we okay, talked about... Wait, what do you mean we talked about call. the secret... Forget about the phone call. It's a secret hey, phone hey, call. Uh, Opie, you're part of the Illuminati and you know it. All right. I don't. I know what you're saying, dude. I don't believe that it's a conspiracy to get Hillary elected. I just don't believe it. It is a little weird, though, because they are very close. They have gone to uh, sure. family weddings. I know... Because um, they're all money. I know Trump has uh, donated to the Clinton campaign over the years. Sure. Uh, yeah, but then, got- cl- but then Trump did explain that uh, on the news programs over the weekend, basically saying, "I have donated to everybody because it's smart to do that if you're a businessman." Plus, in New York, you need Democrats. If you're running things in New York and you want to have a great business in New York, sir, it's a very Democrat. Don't forget, she was a senator in New York as well. Right. You need people on your allies on your side. It's not yeah. crazy to think that a businessman would donate to both parties. Dude, you can't go to somebody's daughter's wedding and then say she was the worst Secretary of State. In American history. Then why sure would he, he say can. that? Why would he sure say he that? That he's not helping Hillary by saying that. Sure. Yeah. But Trump is uh, he, he's a smart guy, man. But it's too he's too good to be true, man. He is just too good to be true. And you watch. <laughs> Unless he'll you're go independent, brown, <laughs> he'll, he'll go independent and take all those votes away. Yeah. From if he goes party. independent, then Clinton wins this thing. That, that's you're obvious right. to exactly. pretty much everybody. Right. Pretty much exactly. everybody, because the third party's not going to win the White House, not yet. But, but we got to so- fast forward a whole bunch of years, and then maybe a third party has a real shot at the White House. Exactly. I like a lot of a lot of <laughs> yeah. jokes. So I'll still vote for him being an independent and take all those votes away from whoever candidate the Republicans have, and she'll fucking just. I, I think you're that. incorrect, buddy. I, I don't think that... Because I'd heard that theory before. I don't think that it's a conspiracy. Because, again, she's so worried now about getting fucking Bernie Sanders kicking her fucking teeth in. I, I literally <laughs> don't think that they're so confident that all of a sudden it's a big conspiracy. I think Trump yeah. is a fucking arrogant guy. And I think all of a sudden he's like, I want to do this. And he's mm. out to do it. I don't think Trump is going to play a fucking... Do you think that he's going to go out there and just fucking tap dance for Hillary Clinton? He doesn't oh, need God, to. Right. No, 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 he, man, no he wants not, this I, thing. He's been wanting to run for president uh, forever. I mean, forever. He always runs, and all of a thing. sudden he's going. He just keeps going. You're right. Remember the one time he ran? He was going to run, but then they were going to look at his finances, and he's like, "Well, fuck that." <laughs> right, exactly. Didn't how last how many years long. ago was that? That might have been uh, eight years ago. Four probably. years ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope it's uh, not a conspiracy, but I really think it's a lot of fishy stuff going on. But thanks for. Taking a call okay, Mister. All right, buddy. you know what I want I to love see? Fishy. People don't say fishy enough. I want to see. Uh, I want to see Trump do act at least with something. And I've said this before. I've seen no empathy from him, and I'm sure he has it, but I haven't seen it. Like I would like to see someone who's going to be president show at least the side of him that is 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 reassuring and empathetic because you he, do need that once in a while. He's you calm, need that. He's you calming also... down a little bit. Like he congratulated Ruby on Cruz on their showing in South Carolina. He wished Jeb Bush nothing but the best. He he actually. Said something like, 
that his son and Jeb Bush's son are, are very close friends or something like that. Right. Yeah, my Which son's Crowder. Jeb's son <laughs> is hiding under a rock. <laughs> right after attacking I want to know about Pope. this secret phone call. You're the one that reported it. I, I, I corner Richard in Florida. <laughs> we, we, we reported a secret phone call. You broke the news. All right, man. There are pictures online of Trump playing with Giuliani and uh, Clinton on a yeah, golf course. Yeah, all three of them. It doesn't mean nothing. Politics mean nothing. That's 2008 at the Joe's Tory Safe at Home Found Golf Classic. Yeah, exactly. They have nothing to do with politics. They're all, it, it, and they did it in, uh, in Trump National Golf Club. I'm sure. So they played yeah. a charity event. They all know each other, these guys. doesn't mean yeah. anything. Yeah. Big money, baby. But I mean, Hillary Clinton would play golf with fucking Rubio. They're, they're the same. Who cares? <laughs> totally. She would have they're to play power the ladies' tees, though. Yes, I would hope so. Why aren't we right. out there playing golf with people? Because golf stinks and it's boring. Whoa, I, I, whoa, I, I, like, it. I like playing golf. <laughs> golf. I've never played it in my life. All right. I would play with I, those three. If, if they wanted to, you know, if Rudy's like, come on, I want to see you play some golf. I'd be like, okay, Mr. Mayor, come on, see you hit the ball to tee. I'm listening. <laughs> you do, do you meet powerful people when you golf? That would be fun. You, you guys want to yeah, know? Yeah. You want to know what that Reagan clip is all about? Yes, I please. do. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Green. Let's say hi to Kim and uh, Charlotte. Kim, go ahead. Charlotte. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning, hi, Kim. Hi, how are hi, you? Kim. Welcome aboard, Kim. Thank you for chiming in. <laughs> what did your husband tell you about this clip? <laughs> uh, I have my own opinion. Thank you, Jimmy. Okay. Sorry, I just way to, go with, <laughs> way to go with the fucking bitch. I apologize. That was my chauvinistic side sneaking out. Once in a while, it does, and I don't even realize it. My apologies. My apologies, Cookie. Go ahead. <laughs> but it's good you listen. Yeah, come on, honey. Now, what, what's the clip about? Yes. So, if memory serves, Reagan and George H.W. Bush had an agreement for a debate with just the two of them, none of the other candidates on the stage. Okay. So Bush was trying to complain because the other candidates were later invited by Reagan. And Bush was complaining that they should leave the stage. And Reagan, this was when Reagan really, talk about putting the hammer down, he, he took over the race at this point because he shut Bush down, embarrassed him on the stage, and from that moment on, Bush couldn't get any traction, but later obviously became... Uh, hold on, what year is this? Because Bush was his vice president. Yeah, the, she said that, and then... I'm sorry, I'm, she, what am I missing? What happened was, uh, Bush was running for the presidency, obviously. Ray, oh, he, uh, he couldn't okay. get any traction with Reagan, and then eventually, even though they were at odds, Reagan picked him as uh Okay, I apologize. Okay. This That's was before exactly that, right. obviously. Thank you, Kim. I was listening. Thank you, Kim. I, just I listened hear. to the slits out there. What did she say? <laughs> hey, I'm a girl that listens to your show. We That's appreciate great. No, We're you're just the, fucking the word, around. The word we you're love. looking for, Kim, is the girl. Yeah. You're the girl who listens to the show. <laughs> we love to know that a few females are listening out there. Um, okay, that makes sense. I have been listening since... All right. Well... Serious, or actually, when it was XM only. So huge fan, love you guys. Can't oh, wait. Who is uh, who is Mr. Green though? He wasn't yelling at Bush. He was yelling at Mr. Green. Wrong name. I think Mr. Green was the moderator. Oh, what, what, what? Why are you saying wrong name, Iraq? Yeah. He, holy shit. Whoa. I know a thing or two about a thing or two. Breaking news. Oh, my God. Iraq's e got a haircut like fucking, like the kid that hung out and walked Pepper. Oh, my God. He looks like the guy who walked Pepper from this boy's life. Wow, it's only been 12 years that you've said that. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Oh, snap. I'll take the slap haircut. back because Iraq e is correct. I have used the same joke for 12 years. You go right. You know a thing or two about a thing or two. You fight. <laughs> The pink team. <laughs> um, Haircuts and confidence. <laughs> yes, From the, uh, the articles I was reading on this, uh, Ronald Reagan got the name wrong. The moderator is John Breen. Oh. Ah. And uh, he said Mr. Breen. And the whole situation was that there was this local newspaper that, in New Hampshire that wanted to sponsor the uh, the debate, but only wanted Bush and Reagan, not the other candidates. Oh. And uh, Bob Dole complained to the election committee saying that if they're going to do that, it's considered a uh, contribution to those campaigns. And oh. uh, it was found that, that that was right, so that they had to allow all the campaign, uh, all the people campaigning, uh, to come and uh, be part of the debate. Reagan wanted them there. He was actually paying the rest of the cost since the paper wouldn't pay for it yeah. out of his own campaign's uh, funding. Why did he want them there? Because he felt it wasn't fair just to have two of the seven uh, candidates uh, doing this public debate and excluding everybody else. Could, could you name all the candidates in 1980? No, I only know three of them. Oh, besides uh, Dole Bush and Reagan. I would only know Dole because of that picture that we just saw. Right. 
And yeah. I forgot that Bush I, ran. I mean, I, I honestly didn't remember that. I would know. Uh, we I would babies. know Reagan and Bush. That's about it. I, I knew Reagan I, I, and Carter. I wouldn't have known Joe unless I saw the picture <laughs> yeah. like Jimmy. Who else was uh, running back in '80? I'm uh, gonna guess uh, no Mondale, idea. James Carter, John Anderson. Oh, John Anderson, Anderson was an independent. That, he was cool. He went into. He was a third party. Yeah. John Anderson was a third party. I like those Eddie wacky Clark. independents. Eddie Clark, George Bush, Walter Mondale, Patrick Eddie. Lucy, David Koch, or Barbara Cock, Ferrara, or Cook, David <laughs> Cook. <laughs> Sorry. Well, this not that anybody cares, but Jimmy Carter. No one well. cares. <laughs> What's what? that? Oh, what, Kim? What? What, what Kim? Jimmy Carter what? Right, Jimmy Carter what? I didn't hear what you no, said. No, I said Jimmy no, it, Carter. I think I said James Carter. James Carter. I was keeping it all nice. Did he, is his brain cancer gone? Like, yeah, he's, yeah. He's doing good. What a tough motherfucker. And it's he, in his 90s, and he just fucking smashed brain cancer in the face. He also has Jesus on his side. Yeah, you got to have Jesus on your side. Yeah, but I, I, I would say... can't hurt you. Yeah, yeah, they went to high school together. They're old. Get it? Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I like that good joke. For, uh, good for Jimmy Carter. <laughs> and good for E-Rock yeah. knowing some of that Jimmy shit. Jimmy Carter's a, a kind human being. Yes, he is. He's a very lovely man. Fucking E-Rock walked in with a quaffed hairdo, ready to fucking lay down some information. He really did. I made a comment, E-Rock fucking slapped me like the bitch that I am, and continued. I haven't wow. seen that confidence in him ever. Well, Yes, it's very unwarranted. <laughs> E-Rock, have a sprinkle uh, cupcake. No, I'm good, thank you. You're not gonna have, you want a cupcake, Tom Papa? No. Oh, just have one. Oh, come on, I'm watching my figure. I would love to have a right. cupcake. I literally like to eat a cupcake without my hands. I'd like to get on my hands and knees with my pants down mm. and take my fingers and shove them in my asshole and just eat one of these cupcakes with no fucking hands. That's disgusting. Why would you even think that? I'm sure it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you even think that? All right, back to Jeb wow. Bush. Those cupcakes are great. Jeb. My wife's got that app where, are, where you could just get anything to, uh, delivered to your house. That's, uh, that's dangerous. What's it called? I, I forgot which one she's using, but basically Bring any, it, but task anything. Rabbit. Anything. Huh? Task Rabbit's the big task one. Rabbit. Is it Task Rabbit? Yeah. So all the restaurants that don't have uh, you know delivery guys now, it doesn't matter. Is Go through a third party, and then you got just grimy fucking guys driving yeah. around Manhattan waiting for, <laughs> waiting, waiting to pick something up for you. Some creepy, it's a creepy. dude just showing up to your house, knowing where you live, coming back. We've had some, we've had some creepers. Yeah, through this app, I'm not gonna lie. I'm to you. sure it's, but bizarre. I mean, they're just, they're trying to make a living and they're working hard. You know, I didn't, yeah, but just because it's on your phone, it's a little creepy. It's like walking up to a guy on the street and being like, "Hey, dude, you want to come to my house?" Yeah. So you yesterday, never, yesterday she's like, "I want to, I want to." Cupcakes. So then she just orders a dozen cupcakes from this place called, I think, Sprinkles on the east side. Oh yeah, Sprinkles. And so now you can just have cupcakes delivered to your house. That's dangerous. It's great though, man. <laughs> what a, like, dangerous. What a genius app. Like so many people can get yeah. work without fucking, yeah, without having to stand in line and go through a bullshit system. You can make some extra money. It's really brilliant. Whoever came up with this, it is really smart because uh, you the know, new economy, guys. It's so good because delivery guys are only uh, working at pretty much Chinese restaurants and uh, <laughs> and maybe a couple other restaurants in the area. That's it. <laughs> yeah, now you can Uber. You can be a cab driver. You can do anything. With their uh, you can rent out your apartment. Yeah. It's pretty. Well, if, you, if, you, if you're, you know, you gotta be careful of that because you can you lose your lease doing that too if you fuck around. Oh, you can. Oh yeah, there like, and be. Yeah, that can be a problem. People well, don't. You, you can't have the fat orgy like that one guy uh, walked into. <laughs> A fat orgy? Yeah. yeah, you don't... I don't know that oh, story. Oh, and it's a comic. He, he, was, oh. he was leaving town, and he uh, rented out his place to an Aaron B, and, and he didn't know they were having an orgy. <laughs> oh. it all, and it was all fat people, too. It was a fat people orgy. Oh, yeah. so, in your place. Known as a stampede. The whole story's fishy, though, because he said something like, I went back to get my luggage. Was that I how it went down? He I said, I, I went back because I forgot my luggage. And then he realized that, holy shit, what the hell are you guys doing in my house? That was a quick orgy then. Yeah, your newlywed couple comes home to cocaine fueled orgy on New Year's Eve. This is a different one. Raunchy revelers rented Canadian pad on Air Airbnb. It, well, I always call it Air and B, but Airbnb. Yes, yes. yes. All right, uh, back to the Jeb Bush clip, please. <laughs> so, but there was something about Task Rabbit. God damn it! Um, Getting shit. Uh, the, the, oh, the genius of the apps. I'm it never, smart. Dude, my app, fl I fucking Christian app, it flopped. What was your what app? What was your app? Have a bowling ball brought over. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you need a bowling oh, ball, okay. yeah. we'll have one drilled. You have to, you have uh -huh. to email in your finger sizes. <laughs> right. And we'll custom make a bowling ball and have one to you in two weeks. Oh, wow. And, and then that, we'll bring it over. You say it flopped? In a cloth. It, it's in a pillowcase. <laughs> it's delivered in a pillowcase. Was there a charge to bring it over? 
Yes, there was. How much? The bowling ball charge uh, <laughs> plus an extra $270 delivery. Uh, oh. I think that's why it might have failed. And plus, they said it took too long. <laughs> and they're like, it never was right. They would, they say, email in your finger length and width, finger girth, and well, nobody knew what the finger girth was. Well, a you, lot of times you We had need, a 98% return rate. <laughs> a lot of times you, it's just about having a catchy name for the app. Did you have a good name? I did. What was have it a bowling ball delivered to you in a fairly... Um, uh, expeditious amount of time. <laughs> With the, is yeah. the um in there too? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I stuttered through it. Oh, so, so I wasn't excited. sure if um was part of the. Uh, oh, yeah. No, yeah. No, that would make me look silly. I, Did you have a hashtag for it? Uh, yeah, yeah, hashtag bowling ball motherfuckers. Ooh. Bowling ball oh. motherfuckers. I, oh, my improv <laughs> skills. I'm too tired. I, uh. I, I went to bowling very uh, recently because, you know, these kids' parties are ramping up. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, one of them was a, at least bowling, and they had a lane for the adults to fool around. And they finally figured that shit out, too. Now it's just small, medium, and large bowling balls. Uh, no, 12 ounce or 16 ounce. Remember when we were growing up, you would go, oh, I want that one, and you, you pick it up and it weighs 80 pounds. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. There was no rhyme or reason to it, and then you pick up the next one, and it's like as light as a feather. And you can't put your fingers in the holes. Like, all that shit. And now your dad just... is yelling at your mom for taking the black one and putting her face on it. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> now it's just small, medium, and large. Extra small, small, medium, and large. Perfect. Don. P people didn't know how to do things or make things for decades. For decades. <laughs> Everyone's just figuring shit out right. now. It really is. They just didn't know how to we do had, stuff. We had a bowling lane in Huntington, and then when you were trying to pick out your fucking ball, it would take forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> there was no rhyme, uh, no reason to this shit. There's bowling Did lanes in Foxwoods. Which is, really? Uh, yep. They have them downstairs. There's this really good steakhouse, and then the bowling lanes are right there, which I never went into. Ooh, that'd be fun. I, yeah, it must be pretty cool. I kind of enjoyed the bowling. Do at the party? Did you have to wear the shoes? Uh you wear the shoes. You got to wear the shoes. Wear the shoes. Yes, but that those are easy too. Yeah, Velcro. Nice. Don't have to tie no them up laces. anymore. Nothing. <laughs> they made it easy. Uh, which lanes were these? The um, Lucky Strikes. Um, the one uh, in Times Square is that Lucky Strike? I don't even know. I think it's on the forty second, right by the river. Um, yeah, down on West Side Highway. Yeah, it's it's middle of Times Square. Oh, middle of Times Square. Yeah. It's between, I think. Uh, yeah, on your way to Eighth Avenue. And did it was they have, nice. Did they have food for the kids? Had food, a birthday cake, little chicken fingers, little chicken fingers. Disgusting fucking bowling ball. Everybody else got their dirty fingers in there. It's I amazing. Nobody. We hit the elevator. I didn't mind. It's just gross. I didn't mind. I don't care. We hit the elevator button with our knuckles because we don't want to catch anything. And we're ready to put our fucking, our fingers into this three pussy plastic thing. Someone's been sweating, scratching their nuts. It's literally like fingering three assholes at the same time. It's disgusting. And then you're putting on smelly shoes. That's but that's not it as bad because you're wearing socks. Only because you're wearing socks, I can tolerate. That. On the way out, though, it's hilarious because there was a whole pile of used shoes and a guy with just a spray. Yeah, that, and he thinks that everything goes away. Just a quick in the heel only. That's it, and then puts them back uh, for the next guy. Gross. I, I didn't mind it. I kind of enjoyed it. It was fun to to do a little bowling. You're just yeah. You're just relieved that there's a decent party for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Instead of the same old shit. Yeah. All right, Jeb Bush. Let's finally get this clip done. Him dropping out. But of But the, the race. people of Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina have spoken, and I really respect their decision. So tonight, I am suspending my campaign. No. Yeah, Who, yeah. Can I please? Who's the person that thought this was a good news conference? <laughs> he just lost terribly. Who thought good news coming? I wonder what he's going to say. Did the other four uh, candidates die? What could he possibly be reporting? Uh, but I'll bet it's good news. <laughs> Naive bitch. Shut up. I, I think Trump had 32%, and then the, uh, the Rubio and Cruz had 22, 21-ish. Yeah. And then I think he had seven or eight. He was way, I mean, nothing. I love yeah. the one who shot. No. Yeah. Poor guy. Seven, what did he have? 7.8. Okay. I, yeah, I'm Car pretty sure the percentage. Carson Zero delegates. In. Ugh, how embarrassing. Carson's still going? Yeah, I don't know how he has money still. Maybe someone could explain that. I like Kasich, but man, I, it's no. not happening. Anyone with the patience no. to operate on a baby brain is going to stick the campaign out. That's why Carson's sticking out. He's not in, he's not in a rush. <laughs> he's used to shit just going wrong, taking time. Patience. He's like, I'm going to fix that little baby brain. Everything is okay. <laughs> Hands are steady. 
<laughs> Smart guy, no rush. I think You're he's, right. I think he's just enjoying himself. I don't even think he wants to be president, but he's enjoying yeah. just kind of being out there. I just like this talking with the people, yeah. and being yeah. around the thing. He, he's yeah. the smartest guy in the bunch. He I sure don't is. Care. A just brain like, surgeon. That'll bring this country together. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be all right. I'm going to go out there and just start to win. Yeah, when I was a surgeon, I used to oh. have trouble like this, but it all worked out. I think he doesn't want to go home to that wife of his. Yeah. <laughs> she's, right. not, she's not a looker. Yeah. The longer I'm on the campaign trail, the longer I cannot fuck this <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> sound like Miles Davis. She's probably, she's, probably, she's probably calling him every fucking day going, when are you coming home? And yeah. He's like, oh, no, I still got a shot out here. <laughs> she's sending lewd photos. And fucking, I still got a shot, honey. <laughs> <laughs> he's way behind, but he's still out on the road. What is that about? <laughs> And Kasich is, uh, could certainly be a VP because he's got Kasich that, is solid. He's got that Ohio, which is important in an election. He's a grown up, so he's you might want honest. him as uh, as your VP to help. That is a good to one. help try to get uh, Ohio. Very smart. All right, back to Bush. You know what? I respect these guys when there's a when there's a Democratic president and a Republican VP or vice versa. When when they can pull that off, yeah. These fucking jizz bags. All they talk about is how we want to work together, we want to lead together, yeah. and they can't get one of each in right. the White House together. Yeah, they're Fair. just shit. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, did he go back to Bush going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, listen to this. South Carolina have spoken, and I really respect their decision. So tonight, I am suspending my campaign. No. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Thank you, man. Oh, he's... Thanks. I feel bad for him. I know. I, I feel bad for the I naive know. woman out there. What did you think was happening? But he's getting all... No! He's getting all choked off. As he should. <laughs> he knows this is it. This, this, you're looking at the end of his political career. He might be governor again, or he might run for something else. I, I don't know, Write a book. Man. I mean, he'll write a book and he'll go on the circuit, maybe, but I think he's done. Toast. He, this was supposed to be his time. He'll sit on a board of five corporations, bring in a cool million a year. I don't feel bad for him. All right, fair enough. He Push will, play. He's fine. I congratulate my competitors that are remaining on the island <laughs> on their success for a race that has been hard fought. Just as the contest for the presidency should be, because it is a tough job. In this campaign, I have stood my ground, refusing to bend to the political winds. I would have to say that you were massacred in this campaign. <laughs> yes. You were run over in this campaign. I was treated like a daisy under a herd of elephants. I was trampled and left dead and broken on the side of the road. Thank you to the one woman shocked that I'm stepping down. She probably hates him. Oh! She's a blogger from Jezebel. She loves attacking him. Oh! She's heartbroken that this lump is fucking dropping out. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I love her shock. I stood my ground. Yes, you did. And you were broken and trampled. <laughs> That's stupid strategy. And then his answer is, yeah, 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 yeah. One person shocked. Please clap. <laughs> All right, listen to this. We put forward detailed, innovative, conservative plans to address the mounting challenges that we face. Heck of. Because despite what you might have heard, ideas matter, policy matters. <laughs> I, and I truly hope that that uh, these ideas that we've laid out will serve as a blueprint for a generation of conservative leaders. Oh, yeah, leaders sure, they work so well for you. Why wouldn't someone <laughs> grab those up and run with them? That's what you want to do. A guy who gets 8% in South Carolina, grab those fucking blueprint plans and run with them. That's, that's a good idea. A blueprint for anybody who wants to go home early. Yeah. Imagine I'm also thinking we should take Iraqi's military plans and fucking use those. Imagine if the blueprints were for a treehouse. How, how great that treehouse would look. He just stinks. A rotting yeah. floor and old rusty nails and just no scraps. stairs. No uh, stairs. That's your blueprint. They <laughs> fucking got nothing done. Oh, he's terrible. I still feel bad for him. Because he's just, a nice face. And you could tell he was crying his eyes out before he went out in front of the people. Good. Yeah. Should have been crying. That dog shit campaign. Getting his head kicked in. you fucking, you're two of the strong, your brother. Fucking uh, one of the most hated men on the planet. you other fucking your dad's VP. For fucking Reagan, and then yeah. you walk in there all shrugging and shucking. Ah, oh, gee whiz, guys. <laughs> Shut up. 
<laughs> fucking go home. <laughs> wow. And I don't even dislike him. I, I really don't dislike this man. I hate the woman. <laughs> I'm still oh, mad at no. her. Oh, no. Oh, I just feel stupid broad. What'd you think was happening? Yeah, I never really liked uh, Jeb Bush, but I definitely feel bad for him here. All right, He's Jeb, guy, Jeb I, I, came in fifth. He's calling a press conference. I'll bet some good news is coming up. <laughs> yeah, I was really hoping that he would have some game. I was really was. I was like, because I, I didn't really know much about him except sure. that he ran. But then I was like, oh, he's gonna be like at least he'll be the McCain yeah. of this. I, I was surprised at, at the lack of game this guy Total, had. I'm like, is this Chip? Yeah, Jeb Bush said you. You know, because nothing in New York, he, he pops up here and there. But did, Very, I'm yeah. like, this is the guy that they've been talking about for all these years. Because he looks like a candidate. He, he certainly he's got does. the good suits. He's got the good head. Right. But then when he started talking, oh boy, he looks like a bush. He has the same. He reminds everybody too much. I think he's probably too self conscious about his brother and his dad and knowing that people were tired of them. Yeah. And he was trying too hard to maybe separate himself a little bit. He, he's a Shakespearean. And he's a mom's boy, too, you can tell. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't think his brother was a mom's he boy. He called on her a couple times. I think his, his mother's brother, a lot tougher than he is. But his brother was the type of guy that blew off curfew and all that. I think Jeb played by mommy's rules. Yes, yeah, George was doing fucking coke off a girl's tits in the backseat getting C's. <laughs> right, right. This, yeah. fucking, this guy did everything this right. dork was getting straight A's. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and looking for mom Mom's uh, approval, <laughs> right? Doesn't he come I'm the across good that one, way? Right, Mama? I'm the good one. Yeah. Well, the other one didn't give a well, fuck. Other, <laughs> he didn't even want to be president. Blew up the world. This, he wanted to be president, and his brother never wanted to be president, it seems like. Yeah. And then as soon as he was done, he was done with politics until he had to try to help his brother out. Uh, this has 20 seconds left. At every level of government so that we can take back our country. We laid out plans on everything. Excuse me. From who? Yeah, take back our country. <laughs> take it back from who? That's Trump's whole campaign. From who has our country? Brown, what do you mean? Brown Obama. people are coming. Brown people, Jimmy. Brown. Does he mean brown people? Does he mean Democrats? What does he mean? Who has our country? Obama hijacked this uh, No, he country. didn't. He won the election. No, he hijacked. Bringing our country back to, uh, to all the people that are being passed over. There's a new economy coming. There's a new way coming. And if you're just that, mm -hmm. you know, blue collar, white, working construction guy, the country's steamrolling away without you. And it's, you know, the old way of operating is, is gone. It's no one's fault. It's just technology and the way things are progressing. And people feel like they're no longer going to matter. take it back from who? Like, who right now possesses them? I don't understand when guys say take it back. It's, we got to take. But if it was a Republican president, the Democrats would be saying the same right, stupid shit. Right, take yeah, back yeah. our country. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. From who? Yeah, I mean. Brown liberals. Brown liberals. All right. Let's. Uh, Women. Mexicans. Women. Mexicans. Mexicans don't own the country. They're coming. No, they're not. They're going to be the, they're going to be the majority in 20. 25? So what's that mean? Tell, tell people to stop fucking? What are you going to do? Well, I'm not saying it's well, ludicrous, no, no, but that's I mean what him. they're talking about. I mean, what is him? And you build the wall. I think, I think... You need an enemy. You need an enemy to run a campaign. Maybe you do. Did you, did you see... Did I dream country. this? Okay. We might have to find this clip, but Trump got mad, so then he said the wall's now going to be 10 feet higher. Did anyone... <laughs> If you could find that clip during the break, did you I probably dream, dream You probably dreamed that you and him were friends and hanging out. <laughs> and, I mean, and Opie said they were going to climb the wall, and he goes, good point, Opie, it's going to be 10 feet higher. Oh, there it, it is. You. All right. Let me see if I can get a shorter one. All right, but go back to the Jeb. Let's finish the Jeb Bush clip, and then we can move it's on to the It's going to be even shit. higher. Yeah, go. From reforming our tax and regulatory system to reviving our economy mm. to rebuilding our military and to fixing the VA. Our military is fine. The best military in the world. I love how he's oh. still making points when everyone said we don't like, care like about your the points. The Republicans feel like it could be a lot stronger. Rebuilding me. the military. We have drones doing what it used to take foot soldiers to do. We have fucking predator drones finding people. We have satellites. Do you know how many how many soldiers rebuilding our military? Mm. Like That's a lot of soldiers that are not going to wind up dead because we have a fucking drone doing stuff. When, Shut up. But when the companies fund your campaign that build the giant tanks, arcane weapons... Uh, yeah. You can give those guys a little Stop nod. it with the rebuilding the fucking military. The military, the, there's no one that the United States cannot wipe off the fucking map if we really, really wanted to. Yeah. Maybe China would be a tough go. Russia would be a tough go. 
But we're, we, we, we're not some fucking third world, mil, third world military. It's the best military in the world. Yep. Yeah. What do you it's want to get more soldiers point. killed because when you have all these machines that are doing stuff? Sorry, satellites are now doing the work of spy planes. You don't need these guys. You know, uh, who was the guy that got shot down? Gary uh, Busey. Ga- no, not Gary Busey. <laughs> He's the one that had the quirky reality show. If you remember? <laughs> oh God, this guy will say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Gary Clark from the US Five. Uh, it does get a little crazy with the things he says. Oh, though. Gary yeah. Sinise, that's the one who got shot. Gary down. Sinise, my plane got shot down first. <laughs> but you know, there's all these things you that are do your Susan. Susan, my fat Asian wife, Susan, Susan. titanium it's, legs. But they're not, you know, they're just selling coke. They're just putting out sound bites. Build the military, right? Bring our country back. You know, it doesn't from the abyss. There's nothing. Yeah, I just don't think the military's in. Tra- in maybe it's not as many bases as there used to be, and I, I understand that's probably annoying, but stop acting like the military is in horrible shape. Well, even the country. I mean, the country is like, they make it seem like it's the apocalypse out there. And you know, you travel around, people are like shopping for, for fun. You know, I mean, this yeah. is not you, the depression. As long as you, we could still shop for fun, we're all right. Is that what yeah. you're saying, Tom Papa? Completely. People are just roaming <laughs> through malls. People are shopping. It's ridiculous. People are bitching and moaning about. Yeah, that's the same. Fucking Amazon's building a, a fucking a, a thing to drop shit off at your house. <laughs> right. We need a helicopter <laughs> to get stuff to people immediately when they buy it. Yeah, but, which I didn't buy into. I thought that was some fucking people, prank. I didn't believe that was an actual thing. Oh, it's coming. I know it's coming. Now I completely believe. Even. And thank God. The way they're going to do it. People lived through the Depression and fighting Hitler. They didn't whine as much as the people who whine now. Right. And the and the drone thing, they could drop these packages now in your backyard so you don't have these thieves <laughs> walking up to your stoop and taking your fucking it, back. Exactly. Sure. Your wife's going to get sprinkle brilliant. cupcakes coming by drone. Sprinkle cupcakes. How will they do it drop in the city, Drop them on though? the roof. They'll have to lower it down. Here's this. If you're the it's more of a floor. suburb thing, I think. I don't. I, they're not going to have uh, allow drones just wandering around uh, midtown Manhattan. Open their no window. Way. Yes, they will. And you're going to lower it down like on a big pulley, and it's going to hang from the drone, and you're going to reach out and go, oh, I'm on the 11th floor, I'll take that. <laughs> Until the first person is killed because they drop something off. They uh, lean a little too far out their window. Yeah, no, or knocks it off the fucking the, the drone pulley and it just falls on someone. Oh, the no. drone pulley. Why did you order a bunch of bricks? That's no good. You ordered a piano. It's fucking... Yeah, this is more of a suburb thing. I uh, yeah. you got to think. Sticking fingers in a bowling ball is gross, but sticking fingers inside a hooker is okay? The irony of Jim Norton pointed out by a caller. That's Josh in Boston. <laughs> yep. Josh, you raise a fair point. <laughs> I don't disagree with your point. Jim, Jim acknowledges that yeah. inconsistency. I have a very fair uh, point by Josh. Uh, will you finish the Trump thing, please, and how he's going home to his wife? Or we don't have that part of it. Let's see. Yeah. Go ahead. Push. Push. Once and for all. Thank you for the opportunity to run for the greatest office on the face of the earth. I love you all. God bless you. Uh, he talked about Done. going home with his best friend, gotta, his wife. It was. Uh, it was. He's got to be nice. relieved. He's got to be so happy to just go home at this point. You uh, think? Yeah. You think he's relieved? No more speeches. Just play some Xbox, kick back, do a couple yeah. bong hits, bang your wife. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Just fucking hang out, and get laid, get a little extra money from the from the fundraising. She's crawling on it. She doesn't have quite as much respect as she used to for you. Your dick, you're losing your erections a little sooner than you used to because now she knows. Because he's probably that's probably their whole thing of dirty talk. You probably fuck her and go take that presidential dick. Wow. <laughs> she probably made him run. She's like, oh, your brother and your father don't really talk to you right at the party. He's like, well, I'm gonna run. She's like, you should. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you with that presidential cock. That's all she'd say. That's going to be a tough Thanksgiving. Take my running mate. As your, yeah. as your dad and uh, brother talk about the presidency uh, and their time in the White House. Remember when Remember when you're president and you right. get off Air Force? Right. Oh, Pass the fucking cranberry sauce. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Poor little guy. Uh, here's Trump saying, uh, I guess I didn't dream it. The, the wall's now going to be 10 feet higher. <laughs> Push play of this. So I get a call from one of the reporters yesterday. And they said, the president of Mexico said, they will not under any circumstances pay for the wall. What is your comment? I said, the wall just got 10 feet higher. It's true. It's true. I know it's Most true. of his followers don't have a high school education. Uh, they're they're cheering the wrong stuff. Like that's a good line, but that's not like he's an entertainer. He's that's not helping. Barham. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of people voting for him now. Yeah, I'm one of them. Uh, I cannot lot, wait to vote for him. A lot of people. It'll be the second time in my life I voted. A lot of people. He's awful. 
So what he's do we got? Terrible is Nevada person. today for the, no, he's okay. the Republicans? No, he's but it's a caucus, right? The he's caucus an, he's is not where qualified. So what? Obama was a junior senator. I'm happy yeah. Obama won, but he was a junior. Tomorrow. He was a senator. Tomorrow's the primary in Nevada. I think Obama was. Is it a caucus or a primary? Caucus. Yeah, caucus oh. means you have to like uh, tell the whole room your vote. What fucking weird? That's what a caucus is. That's the difference yeah. between a caucus and a primary. It's like Hillary, she's it's a part timing. of the system. She's she's deep ingrained. And fuck all the men. I just like him because he's a little different than the rest. Of that's why. If it was somebody else, I'd vote for somebody else. If it was another guy who I thought he's is, a demagogue filled with hate. But they all are. No, they all are. They could be incompetent. They could be shills, but. This guy's hate. He's a naked version of all of them. He's not hate. I don't think he's hate. He's a nude version. You tell me Rubio's not hate or fucking Ted Cruz, all this religious shit. What's more fucking hateful than religion? What causes more problems Nobody than else religion? Nobody picks out minority groups and makes them the the victim of your campaign. That is the fundamental difference he, with this guy. He's definitely made some stupid statements and missteps, but that the difference between that and being hate, it's like these guys are running based on their religion. Like they're mm. saying that that's going to be an important part of it. They want their religion to dictate the way right. the policy goes. And maybe that's not quote unquote hate and maybe he's saying it wrong. But he, again, he's a nude version of all of them. They are not one ounce more altruistic than he is. That's They're all the same. Here's a good point. The religion thing is a good point. I don't like the religion. No, it's crazy. crazy. That, that, so if you're not Christian, you're just completely on the outside. It, it, to that's, a certain degree. So that's what Cruz is basically right. saying, I think. Yeah. Look at right. the way they talk about it. Like, I like the way he just handled the Pope. Pope, I mean, I, look, I, I like this Pope. Stay out of it. Right. <laughs> Mind your fucking business. You don't even pay taxes here. But, and the Pope has a lovely wall around Vatican City. Exactly. He's got an amazing wall keeping everybody out. I know. It's pretty bad. So, I don't know. It's, no. it's all just... Lunacy. Look, I love, the, I love the Maverick. I love the outside guy. I love the, the Naders and the Ross Perots and But... This guy, you know, what about he's the, different. What but about he's, the Pauls? He's, he's not a good person. You didn't, yeah. you didn't put the Pauls in there. <laughs> and the Pauls. The Ram Paul. Yeah, the Pauls. But uh, people are sick of it. The only way to break the fucking pattern is to shake it up. I tried with Ross Perot. A lot of people voted for Perot. Yeah. He flipped out a little bit. Yeah, I like Perot. But what else are we going to do? For Vote for Hillary? It was, or fucking Bernie? Who's, again, he's a different guy, but I want to keep some of my money. Sorry, it's Bernie. It's going to be Hillary. But, but you missed the whole Ross Perot point with the Stockdale again. His what? running mate fucked him up. Yeah, he went. Yeah, he was batshit crazy. Why am I here? <laughs> right. oh, whatever it was. <laughs> right. Who am I? Why am I here? Remember, oh, remember no. Phil Hartman's? Yeah, yeah, it was oh, awesome. God, it was but great. then it turns out this guy <laughs> had, had some head injury problems because you know he fucking he's he was a hero. He made but noise. He had no reason. He had no business being on that stage. He, he said, "Where are uh, uh, who, uh, whatever?" But he Perot, got, Perot, he said, himself. "You're all wondering." Yeah, Perot freaked. He's saying, "You're probably all wondering, who am I? Why am I here?" Why am I here? He was speaking for them, but they isolated the clip. But, Same way the news fucked this little black kid. Isolated the clip of him saying he wanted a gun in Chicago. Right. Um, I don't know if you saw that's a big story about how they isolated to make it look like the fucking four year old was a thug. Thank you. I didn't. I didn't see that. What was that? I'll play it after the break. I guess. But yeah, we'll, we'll, get it for, we'll get it. We'll get it for the. It was more than the who am I? Why am I here? Though. Then the stuff he was trying to talk about during the debate was pretty rough. He was off the rails. He was off the rails. But it was Perot a horrible was, choice for a VP for Ross yeah, Perot. Was a and that he was had a, a lot of momentum going. A lot. He was killing it. Mm -hmm. He was killing. But he back. It. He dropped out too. He acted fucking weird. Ah, they're sending people to my... I remember Randy Credico, a comedian, did a very funny bit on uh, Ross Perot freaking out. He was like, they're sending people to my daughter's wedding. It was just too much. I don't yeah. remember all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, he dropped out. Ross Perot fucked up way beyond James Stockdale by dropping out and acting nutty. Okay. And again, yeah. it's been so many years, I don't remember exactly what, but I was heartbroken when he... I know. You do You do crave someone to come in and and... and upset the apple cart, as they say, and just be, be completely different, but well, Trump isn't the answer. And all I see is Dana Carvey now, when, you, when they show you pictures of Ross Perot. I know. <laughs> he, did a, yeah. he did a great Ross he Perot. He did a great I, Perot. I don't find him to be more hateful than, again, he says but, inflammatory things. But you're, you know, he's, you're saying he's not as hateful as these guys running with religion, which is like Cruz, and that guy is hateful as well. But they're all the same. I, I think that all of them are... They're all, I'm they're with all Jimmy. politicians. They're all scummy yeah, politicians, 100%. They are 100%. all scummy politicians. Uh, I'm with Jimmy. But this guy is... This guy... A guy like that is literally dangerous. How? Literally dangerous. Well, you had... 
you had Bush who went into Iraq and blew this thing up, and that is the whole problem with the Middle East. You just stabled an entire region that we're now for decades are, are dealing with. For I think decades. You, in high and that is a major... I'm, I'm not saying it, it, it had ill will or was... Right, it was a mistake. It was right. a, but it was a fucking mistake. And... People that are not qualified make fucking mistakes. And you put a guy like that in there, the mistakes could be even bigger. But a guy like Trump, and he did, it's a good point. I was for the Iraq war and, I, and then became against it. I was Just wrong to destabilize the whole region. And what we should have done is, is a guy like Trump should have done is let Saddam Hussein handle business the way he wanted. Sure. And Absolutely. If you, and if you said that back then. People would go, oh, my God, you're well, so heartless. You don't yeah. care. So there was no right answer. I mean, it's easy to yeah. say that now, unfortunately, but most people would agree that it was a good thing to have you know, Saddam Hussein to in take, charge. Absolutely. He sort of understood it's all the moving parts. It's horrible that these dictators were awful, the horrible people. They just crushed their own people. But... There was order. <laughs> right. There was fucking order. How many dictators right now awful, but... are operating where the American people are going, yeah, let's leave him in there because he's keeping order. We never say that until it's over, and then there's a mess, and then the people are like, why'd you go in and interfere? But if you allow it to happen, and you allow someone just to kill all their citizens, or a lot of their citizens, people are like, you got to break it up. Yeah. It's like, we're, we're, they're we've... in a no-win situation. Because well, we you... feel like our dick is the biggest, and like, look, we know better. We, we could get him out of there, and we'll make it even better it for the so... people. I mean, think how naive it's kind of that arrogant. was. It's arrogant. arrogant to say we're going to go into an entire country, take this guy out, and let these different factions just, I mean, work it out uh, among oh, themselves, and, basically. Peace and freedom is going to reign supreme. It was awful. And so, But m the, the point is, you put someone in that position that can make those kind of moves, as we're seeing now, you live with the consequences. For a long it's, time. So it's fun to watch him, and it's fun to have him be, like, cool and, like, blow shit up and say what he's saying, and it's refreshing, and it's it's exciting. Well, but there's real-time consequences if somebody like that is in But office. here's the problem. Who do they have that isn't that guy? They don't. That's why Especially it's going to be Kasich Hillary. John Kasich is the only <laughs> one left that he is. seems a bit uh, more level-headed. And Rubio's pretty... He's, he's, he's a little... He doesn't have good game, but at least he's got some policy and got, he, was, he was pragmatic about things. You also so. know, too, that, that, that you need Congress to do certain things. And Bush had the mm -hmm. support. A lot of people were, were... There were people who voted against going to Iraq, but a lot of Democrats voted for it. Well, mm -hmm. they scared the shit out of everybody. I, I'm not for war at all. And I was like, we got to go in there and stop them. <laughs> right. When they put Powell out and he's talking about nuclear weapons and all. He was like, holy shit, we got to go. But it was all ginned up. It was ginned up bullshit. But the Democrats bought it, too. It wasn't just one guy. Point is, Trump can't just say, we're going to do this, and everybody does it. It doesn't work that way. The, I, he won't get nearly as much done because, he, you, you know, again, the Democrats will hate him so much, and Republicans will resent him. He'll get some done, but he's not just going to go in there and fucking make the whole place different. But what he will do, which will be so refreshing, is, is speak honestly about the process and who is fucking it up in the moment. These fucking guys, they filibuster. They're just cunts. Yeah. They're awful. They are, but I'm going to stand there and filibuster. And I know that's a part of American politics. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's exactly who they are. They're going to stand there and just talk so you can't you vote. No, They're politicians the are the worst. They're in the pocket of it. You shouldn't everybody. be allowed but to read know, green you... eggs and ham in front of a bunch of grown men and women <laughs> right. ever. And you also, you know, you have somebody like that who you, who you know what, honestly, you don't even know what he stands for. You don't really know exactly. He has no policy at all. Hasn't told you one thing of a, a practical other than building a goddamn wall. He hasn't told you anything. Well, so you put a guy like that in power and then shit goes down and someone releases a dirty bomb somewhere. Who knows what kind of reaction and what, how advantage they take, they take advantage of the people and you end up completely screwed. But the reality he is, is that, not a, this is, it's a dangerous choice. They're not, they're, they're, they're people who are giving you their policies. First of all, everyone says stuff when the election they don't mean anyway. So a guy not listing his exact policies is meaningless to me. I mean, I would rather know what they are, mm -hmm. but I don't believe any of the other guys anyway. I don't believe that they're all just giving me their genuine reaction to shit. And, um, people are making a statement with him. It's like, all of the shit you guys are saying you're going to do. We respect somebody who is just saying what he wants to say more. We respect somebody who is at least, we feel, giving an honest perspective, whether it's right or wrong. 
That is the statement that they, these fucking idiots should take out of this. For it's sure. not that, you know, I'm not a dummy. I'm not looking at it like, yeah, Trump's going to give me a hat. That's not why I like it. Right. No, I don't I know like him because he's politically incorrect. There's it's not lot, about saying bad things about Mexicans. There's a lot less bullshit with him. It's just about, a, I feel like a guy he's is saying honest. what he wants when to say. He's being real. When most of these politicians talk, you just they're dripping with He bullshit. shouldn't stand out. In an honest place like that, he right. shouldn't stand out other than, oh, he's a big businessman, but he's not as qualified. But right. Ted Cruz, this fucking... That's they're, the they're, All of them are... Hillary's awful, too. They stink, all of them. That's the problem. I'm telling you, like, if you had McCain around, or like, or Romney... You'd be like, oh, thank God. At least it's I like those guys. I like McCain very honest. much, but they, I would vote for Trump first. You would over yes. McCain? I don't know. Well, I, you know what? He had integrity. Over McCain, McCain yeah. maybe not. Over he, McCain, very tough. Tough. service. But yeah. over, over Romney, definitely. Yes, over Romney. I never liked Romney. I didn't either, but at least he was a grown up. And uh, oh, we're just cackling like well, hens. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's just—he's just sleazy. What scares me is why? Why is this our choices? It's really strange. Well, that party blew itself apart. But what uh, on the beholden Demo to the Tea Party and the evangelicals and the conservative and the the traditional and, base, and, and it's blown apart. What has the, the Democrats problem. done to themselves? They have uh, Hillary you. and a radical socialist. They do, but That's it's, a, you got two choices over there. So terrible. What, so what? Everyone else said, "All right, let, it's Hillary's time, so we'll just we'll just not run." It, uh, I guess Pretty that's much. how that played out. Pretty much. And they Bernie know. Sanders is like, "Fuck this, I'm I'm in." Yeah, because that's bizarre too. That that's our choices on the on that side. And the government's so fucked up that good people do not go towards government well, I, anymore. I've read those articles. They over the don't years. go towards. There's so that. many so many uh, uh, very qualified people that Super would rather talented. would rather not deal with the horseshit in Washington. No. And that's another why reason why you? they don't you know step forward and try to become you know the president or even a senator or a governor. At this, they don't. At this uh, point. Everybody's so fed up, and you so what you you're a talented individual and you want to do good, and then you go to the Senate. And you sit there for five years with doing nothing. Right. Well, who, what smart person makes that choice? When you it's could, just an egomaniac makes that. That's choice. all of them. They're they're just career people. It's nice to see somebody coming in and humiliating them. <laughs> and I know that sounds I'm childish. With you on that. No, I'm 100 he's, with I'm you. 100 with he's making, you on he's, that. What he's doing is he's, yep. he's opening up this weird door, and you're seeing all of them in a way that we've never yes. seen them before. Because even Perot didn't come at them like this. Even Perot didn't right. talk to them like they're stupid and incompetent when they really are. <laughs> Trump is saying things that every person says about them and then we look at them and go why is Trump saying that stuff I don't know because every person looks at them and goes what the fuck do you know yeah, right. exactly so it's kind of refreshing <laughs> to see a guy and he isn't cowed by them when they when he says something that they don't like, right. he's not cowed by them getting upset. He, he's not frightened by them getting upset. And there's something refreshing about somebody who isn't an absolute coward. It's they, a refreshing as a show, and it's refreshing to break up, up up the the process. But it's still scary to me that if he was actually be in the office. I find it refreshing as a show, but also as somebody like, yeah... I don't think he would do anything. He's not going to get a wall built. I mean, st those things don't mean anything. <laughs> they don't mean anything. that him saying that doesn't mean anything to me as much as that fucking Ted Cruz talking about how important his mom is to him. None of that shit means anything. To <laughs> right. But he is a very successful businessman, and it'll be very interesting to see who he picks for VP and uh -huh. and, and, and others he surrounds himself with. That would be very fascinating. Well, it was to, to see if there's some real political minds involved with his whole thing. Well, he's lined up with Palin already. So well, that, that was... That, there's that some was, fun stuff I for you. I hated that. I'm like, what are you... What are you, you didn't need he's not her. Taking, if he takes her as a vice stupid. president, that's suicide. No, he wouldn't do that. Yeah. He wouldn't do that. But who no. cares who she likes? Does, she's harmless, too. Like, I, I was a, hated her more than they should That should've. was embarrassing for him, I thought, that he went down that fucking <laughs> road. He didn't, he didn't need to do that shit. You could see the regret in his face when she was speaking. He was just like, what? jeez, uh, maybe this was a mistake. <laughs> oh, Sarah Palin. That was really? a terrible yeah. mistake. Yeah. That was a terrible mistake. <laughs> right. really was like, I, what are that, you I doing? want to hug McCain. Whenever I see her, I want to hug McCain. <laughs> I know, me oh, too. John. Oh, that's so <laughs> That was a bad. terrible mistake on McCain's part, It obviously. really was. But it wasn't too smart for Trump, but it didn't fuck Fucking hurt him, didn't fucking hurt him at all. They were well, he lost. All. He lost in that state. True, but he he destroyed in South Carolina. She's she's still supporting. She's still running around South Carolina. I I think they. I think she's kind of. I haven't like, seen her. She's since kind of disappeared one. a yeah. little bit, right? Like they probably she said, came out. Hey, they lost hey. Iowa. Yeah, and then they're saying, well, "No, we don't need you this week." She <laughs> may also help him with the uh, with the real arch conservative religious people because a lot of them really like her. Old a lot white, of them really mm. feel connected to her. Old white males love Sarah Palin. Yeah, and religious people. They enjoy her. love she's sexy. Sarah. 
She's but, lost a little of her game, though. But going yeah. back to Jimmy's point, uh, you know, in the, in the last couple months, they're, they're showing a lot of old footage of other people running for the presidency, and they all just say the same shit it's year terrible. after year, campaign after campaign. Mm. It's all, and I think America's finally realizing it's just horseshit. That's what Trump is. He represents people being sick and tired of the same garbage. That he's, he's over not, and over again. He's not dangerous. He's actually, it literally is like a cold water splash in everyone's face. You know, look, Obama, when he ran, said he he was going to pass health care. He was going to end the wars. He was going to close Guantanamo. Mm-hmm. And whether you agree with those things or not, he ran on those things and then went after those things and achieved those things. He did. You he know what I mean? Close Guantanamo. And Guantanamo's, yeah, it's, it's no, well, that's not. And the war but, kind of wound down. That's you know, no, he, but but he really did make a you know. And at that yeah. point, it probably was a mistake to pull out because now you were left with this. But w- w- that aside, you're saying he did. I'm saying he ran there. right. Yeah. He said there is something you do have to pay attention to what they say because there is a policy and there is stuff that they are going to right follow through that's true. on. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I would like I'd, to hear what Trump. I would like to hear like if Trump is such a smart businessman and he is such a smart guy. Get in a room with some of the really smart guys and come away with just a couple ideas of like, you know what? This is the way we're going to do it. Here's, Obamacare sucks, but this is going to be the thing that's going to Here's why he it. doesn't do it. And this is my guess. He doesn't need to yet. The bottom yes. line is he's fucking trampling all these, these fucking dunces. And instead of dropping down and fucking playing cards the way they always play... He's doing what he's doing, and it's working. Like, why right, would why you would all of you? a sudden open yourself up? <laughs> I hope you're right. Any more than why do they? Why would they get into a fucking a battle with him when they're going to get massacred? No, you're right. So they do things in their lane, and he's staying in his lane. It doesn't mean he doesn't have no, any ideas. Completely. No, but eventually he's. <laughs> oh, you'll have to, of course. You're right. Let me. Let me do. The, uh, you may. He might have to. He might not have to. We sort of got to get to a break, but this is too good. Uh, I'm going right down the the, uh, the line here. Avery in Virginia. Bush wants to build military because defense contractors pay him. Brian in El Paso. Right. Trump is pandering to the ignorant and racist. Mike in That's Maryland. That's incorrect. That's not incorrect. No, because you want I, to take him first? Yeah, maybe okay. I disagree with that. Uh, Brian, go ahead. I think that's intellectual <laughs> elitism, what you're saying. But hello. Hey. Hey, if, if Cruz is pandering to the religious, then uh, Trump needs to find his base. His base is ignorant racists. That's why things like no more Muslims coming into the country work. That's why no Mexicans are going to go over that wall that Mexico is going to build works. I think That's the whole, I think the no Muslim thing. He's been able to I, I think so the far. no Muslim he thing. Offered anything oh, sorry, you go ahead. Other than to pander to racist, ignorant fucks. Sir, I think the Muslim thing was a mistake. It was a dumb thing he said. It's not really American. But the problem is this. What he said... People do think that. And it's not all ignorant racists that think that. You get this feeling, and maybe this is just bad PR by Islam. Yeah. But you think, like, Muslims don't like us. They don't They don't seem to give a shit that this... And I'm not saying this is true. I'm just saying this is sometimes a perception. A feeling. Yeah. And you hear that every time there is one of these attacks, it's by somebody who's Muslim, and they say they're doing it because of Islam. So when all these Syrian refugees want to come, and then people are saying, no, they shouldn't be vetted by the FBI, and yet it's turning out that some of them are turn out to be radical, it's just a dumb, maybe it's not the right solution, but don't say that nobody has thought that to say that you got to put a moratorium on. That would never happen, and it shouldn't happen. Mm. But I don't think it's based in hatred as opposed to maybe just a wrong policy idea. I don't, I don't but think... For, I think for, but for us to... But for us to I, say I, it in a look, bar... If you say he's the brilliant businessman that he is, and that everything is thought out, and this is refreshing, this is all very well planned on his part. It's not unscripted. He knows exactly what he's doing. He has people who run focus groups. They know who they're pandering to. So let me ask so you something, too. He's pandering to racists. I don't... I, I, but, I, but the numbers... The, the numbers are too big, though. I, I don't necessarily disagree with Brian. I think he is pandering to some ignorance, ignorant and racist people, but the numbers are too big so who not all those people are ignorant and racist so why are those people voting for trump and supporting him ignorant racist people do you think the the point of uh, of the amount of people that are supporting him yeah that that's that's a lot of fucking ignorant and racist people in in america there's still six there's still six people in the field it's spread out it's not like he's got an overwhelming Right. I don't. I know why you're saying that, but I don't. I. I think that. Uh, I, I think when you're she, incorrect. When I'm not, Cheney, I'm not an when Cheney comes, when Cheney right. comes out and says the stuff he's saying is not American, and 
Then you know he's gone too far. No, you know Dick Cheney is a company <laughs> man, and Dick Cheney is a part of the same system yeah. that fucking Hillary and Bernie are a part of, and they're annoyed that this guy is coming in and waving his big dick and smacking everybody in the mouth with it. Yes. So Cheney but there's, is going to... That should make liberals he, like him. He's fucking they up. hate Cheney, but now they agree with Cheney? He's fucking up the easy money. Let's... Uh, Halliburton? Hello? Isn't they there hate something Cheney, but now they agree Mr. With Cheney? Isn't there something to a higher ideal of being an American? Thanks, Brian. Yes. Isn't there something to... Including all people, we're a, com- we're a country of immigrants. Yes. And then you have this guy up there just going, just picking people off, and let's make these guys the victim. Let's make these guys the enemies. And doesn't that make you feel kind of dirty that the person that's going to run for the president is the person is spouting bullshit like a drunk guy at a bar? No. Don't you want to be held to a higher? Don't you want to feel good? As we did when we were growing up, that our country is better than this kind of attitude. Um, first of all, American exceptionalism is very overrated. All right, it's, it's we we fucking ran around telling everybody in the world how fucking wonderful we are for the last eighty years, and we are a great place. We also can be as dirty as everybody else. I wish we, we would can, stop with that nonsense. But, but shouldn't you strive to be that? And shouldn't you include Italians and Jews of and Irish and Me- and then you have this guy who's running for president saying fuck all these other people? I don't think he said that. I think he was more he, he talking. The problem is illegal immigration. And I think the problem is, I don't think anybody objects to legal there, immigration. There's now. a way to say that, though, Jimmy. Okay. Other than, other than these, right. these scumbag drug rapists. You're right. Rapists. He didn't say it right. And that's he doesn't p- say anything right because it's in his heart. Because he's not a trained, he's not a fucking trained. You he's, wouldn't say those things. You're not trained, and you would not get up there and have hate spewing out. You would be intelligent. The you'd idea be like, of there's being, a problem to deal with. You wouldn't if, make these people victims. You wouldn't do if it. He was, if it was all hate, he would hide it. The thing is, these guys are trained at this. It's what they do. They say exactly what they plan on saying. They don't go off book. They say they say it right. They smile when they don't want to smile. They laugh at a joke that smashes them good naturedly. He's not. He's comes from a different place than that. I'm not saying he hasn't said ignorant shit, but he's coming from a different place. He's coming from a world where you don't have to do that to survive. So that's why he's standing out like, wow, he's a maniac when he's just saying things. They were trained long ago. You don't say it like that. Here's how you say it. It's, it's just a different. Uh, it's a different uh, set of skills. Mm. He doesn't have the skill set to be a smooth, like a smooth talking son of a bitch. He doesn't have that. And and that's why he comes off as so blunt and crazy, because he comes from a world where you're sitting in a room with people and you're the fucking boss and that's it. But you know how like some people ruin their car- careers by blurting out something racist? You know, yeah, hey, absolutely. Always, and, and we hate it when their careers are ruined for saying something stupid. Right. Racist. <laughs> right. But there's there is like you you kind of like, well, he didn't mean it. Or whatever, but. There's something inside him that it comes out. Like, if you were in that same situation, you wouldn't blurt out the N-word because it's just not in you. This guy is not a good person at his heart. Mitt Romney. What happened when Mitt Romney was naked? He didn't know he was being recorded, and he said that dumb shit at that fucking dinner. About the 1%. Right. See, that's the thing. Trump would have said that publicly. Right. He would have said that publicly, and people would have asked him. that's fine. But point is, these guys are all the same. Mitt Romney... Just said it privately, and it happened to get out there. So right. we're like, "Oh, that's who this guy right. is." He's lying to us. But yes, which most of these guys are. They all are. They and all are. That's why. But that's be, politics. That's why Trump. <laughs> yeah, but why, why people, do we accept that? That's why people find Trump refreshing. I don't think it's all just uh, racist assholes. No, it's not. And, and I think the numbers are, are too fucking big at these rallies. When the field gets pared par- down, you're spreading it over six. No, people, I understand so that. Right. Yes. Every time someone drops out, that hurts Trump in general. Right. I understand right. that because uh, the other guys are the established candidates, but. I'm with you in, in a But Trump setting. said the other day, though, like, everyone just assumes that a guy drops out and then the, all the, all those people go to who's right. left. And he's laughing. He's like, no, I'm going to get some of those fucking people. <laughs> he's right. That'll be interesting to see because that's the only hope uh, the the establishment has. Yeah. Is uh, you're hoping that when these guys drop out, all everyone goes to the one candidate. And yeah. then Trump's in deep trouble if that if that's, uh, if that's if it works out that way. The yeah. math doesn't work out for Trump. People who are saying he's, I'm not saying he hasn't said the hateful shit or whatever, but people who are saying that that's the only reason, like the guy who called it's in, it's not the only reason anymore, man. I don't believe we're it. not a bunch of no, hayseeds running around it. going, I don't want a guy going to tell the Mexicans. <laughs> I'm voting for him, and I think it was dumb that he said that. And I didn't like what he said about McCain. I didn't like a lot of the stuff he said. Yeah. But I like what he represents, which is a giant fucking hammer to the temples of the rest of them. <laughs> and I'm ready to fucking take it for four years. Like, whatever happens, 
Bush, like you said, Bush got us into a war. Right. Look at Jimmy Carter. The fucking the problem we had with Jimmy Carter financially. The fucking uh, the, the sixteen percent interest. Rates. Uh, come on, <laughs> these are established guys. Look what they can did I, to the country. Can I get in on this? Okay. And Clinton with blowjobs in the Oval Office. Oop. Sure. <laughs> it's no joke. That fuck things up big time. <laughs> that like, opened the door for a lot of horseshit. We've had around. a lot of problems so far. It's not really a joke. It really is. I mean, as silly as it was, right. it, that that gave an opening that changed the world. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we Tom Papa, shut up, you you ignorant <laughs> bastard is coming in. Oh, I thought I was I thinking that, or did, did someone say it? Uh, <laughs> call for Mr. Papa. Why are you being so ridiculous? Well, I, I don't think Tom's being ridiculous. Who's being saying? Ridiculous? Let's, let's, we talked to this guy We're, insulting my friend. <laughs> do you want, I don't like it. Do you want Bill in Georgia oh, who's come on, calling you ridiculous, or do you want Ray who's calling you an ignorant bastard? Which one do you want, Tom? I'll yeah. take the ignorant bastard. And how about bastard? Jim calling All you a right. faggot pinko comic? <laughs> <laughs> Ray in D.C., go ahead. We got Tom Pop in the studio today. How you doing, boys? All right, Hello. buddy. Good morning. Here's the problem when you guys talk politics. I love your show. <laughs> you know, half your audience is alienated regardless of what your position is because the country's so divided. Yeah, we're but just giving a pass, that. dude. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. A great show. I love you. We're trying to figure it all out. Yeah. Let me hug you, Jeff. Anyhow. Oh, you, sweetie. Uh, That's tr that is true. We just try to figure it We're out in front of your eyes. We don't know. I, I mean, I'm not... <laughs> qualified to be talking about this shit. Pardon my interruption, <laughs> sir. Amanda says, Tom, uh, oh no, forget it. I just, I backed up. Right. I thought they were insulting Tom. I was going to gleefully ah. read the tweet. <laughs> you were so excited. Oh my, I get a fucking, my filled up. Here's my comment on Trump and the Muslim thing. I, you know, I'm calling you from D.C. Okay. If you talk with anybody in the uh, D.C. community that works for the government and security, they all say it's not a matter of if. But it's a matter of when they get off a nuke or a dirty bomb in D.C. or New York. You only have to be right once. And everybody I've talked to thinks it's going to happen, whether it's this year, whether it's five years, whether it's ten years. And when that happens, that horrible event, and you guys aren't going to be in your serious studio, you know, Jim's not going to be in his apartment, I wonder if people are going to go, you know, maybe we ought to agree with Trump in making sure we know who's coming in the country. Because a lot of people are coming to the country and they don't vote well. They don't wish good things for America. So it's great to be liberal and say, hey, it's the land of the free. We welcome everybody. The problem is, like those people in San Bernardino, they want to do us harm. And if they do us harm on a massive scale, I wonder how many liberals will think, gee, maybe we ought to start checking IDs at the border. And when you sure. say that, people think, oh, you're paranoid and you're buying into fear. But you're, it's not paranoid to be smart about it. And if, 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 if I thought that they showed a balance in the way they handled this stuff, although nothing bad has happened, you know what? You have to say, too, since Obama's been president, not only has he been the fucking drone strike kid, which makes me want to give him a big kiss on the cheek, yeah. it, bad shit hasn't happened. I mean, they've still yeah. stopped shit. The police are still doing their job. So it's not like we've had this horrible thing. But the dirty bomb is scary, and I don't feel like I'm paranoid thinking that. No, they, for they, sure. They, they really do want to get that. If they get it, it's completely... And, you know, there was a great special on... On, uh, on Vice, you watch Vice? Yeah, such a good news program, and they were sh yep. showing the Syrian refugee problem. And for some reason, the way they shot it, it was such an it was it made it very real. This mass of humanity just pouring out of there by mm -hmm. the millions, and you know that you know that's a great way for terrorists to find their way into just the country. A hundred percent. Yeah. So what's yeah. the right you, way to do you, it? You got to be hardcore. Yeah, absolutely have to be hardcore. I mean, it, it breaks your heart. When you see, you know, these babies being the, the mom carrying these, right. and they're literally just walking for right. hundreds of miles, and you do, I, I, you really crave that someone in that community would be the leader and making things better and making things like you, you, have a way for us to have some kind of dialogue, but it doesn't exist. So of course you're terrified. I'm terrified, and you don't want to just open the, the doors and just be porous and let them pour in. Mm -hmm. You got to do it. But there is a way to, you know, not prey on people's fears in a speech and and blanket all of these people. But that doesn't mean I, that he's only talking with hey. Somebody said something no, on the it's Twitter. True. I mean, I what the caller says is uh, well, is accurate. I mean, it's it's a, a terrifying yeah, thing we'll, we'll link and to, complex. We'll link the Vice thing you're talking about on our Twitter. So I haven't seen that one. It yet. really is I, good. I gotta check it out just to see the massive yeah, humanity. I've just seen like, the footage where it's you know complete families going. Where the fuck are we going? Yeah, how, are we gonna make how are we gonna make this work? And as you're walking, everybody's saying 
get keep going because you're not stopping here. Yeah, because you're scaring the shit out of us. Right, because the people in your community well, are doing heinous shit. Well, in right? Syria, I mean, let's be honest, they weren't exactly a very pro-U.S. place yeah. before. I mean, didn't they just do nothing but fund terrorism? The government, like that, they, they, it's like Pakistan. They don't like us there. Yeah, they don't. They hate us. And maybe they, maybe in their Assad, mind they're right know. to hate us. Okay, but, but the problem, but that's like Assad. That's Assad. And then you still. Have, but is it but all Assad, you, dude? Is it all? I don't know. I'm sure he's a huge part of it, but is no, he the only reason they no, hate us? No, I mean, you know, no, they grow up just... in their schools, like, learning okay. from day one how shitty we are. Mm. And they, yeah, they, they have a real hatred for us. So, so what should we do about that? Invite them into the country? Like, literally, there are people that want to say, let them come in. Like, yeah. oh, because they, it's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Tom Papa, you're asking for a liar as a president. Who am I asking for? Any of them. Uh, well, is anybody... Th that's what this guy picked up on everything... That you said that I'm me. asking for a liar. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. guess so. Me, I guess me, you know what? He's not wrong. If if, you, uh, if you're going to vote for someone in politics, you're voting for a liar. You don't so. want to uh, vote for <laughs> someone that's being honest. You, you just want to vote for someone that has the same sound bites as everyone that has come uh, before them. Right. Yeah, right, Steve. True. Is that what you're basically saying? Yeah, I love you guys, man. I'm just enjoying listening to you guys this morning, but. You know, I, I understand both sides of it. I really don't even know where I stand on the whole fucking thing. But a lot of people that hate Trump say, well, I know most of them are full of shit, but they basically, they just want a more groomed liar. Oh, he's, he looks cleaner and he's better at saying it. But we know that it's prob he's probably not or she's probably not going to do anything that they say when they're running. When they get in there, we just don't like the way Trump says it because he hates them. Although, although Tom did say, which was, which was right, that Obama did kind of run on something and go after that. Like, he did say what he wanted to do. And, you know, he got some of it done. He didn't get all of it done. Yeah. But he, he did kind of stick with what he said he wanted to do. Yeah, these guys all oh, promise every. They promise everything. Oh, they promise. Yeah. They're, they're like me oh, in a relationship. God. <laughs> when I ran for... Uh, why? When I ran for... Uh, president of the seventh grade <laughs> i i just knew quickly like why would i be honest and i just went up there in my cafeteria and i had to give a speech and right. i said we're gonna have soda machines in every classroom and they, the cla <laughs> everyone, they everyone started cheering <laughs> and i was like we're going to disney world everyone started cheering i wish I your fucking I seventh grade <laughs> presidency ended like jfk's <laughs> in <the fucking> I, cafeteria <laughs> i won in a landslide <laughs> nothing beautiful and nothing then, got through and then you're able to spin out of it you're like <laughs> yeah. look i i really wanted a soda machine in every classroom, but I, they went over the budget, and I couldn't get this yeah, done. I know. I it just, wasn't me. I was a fucking principal, you should believe. Yeah, we... we How uh, long has it been That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, we, we need a president with sin in his name, but not in his heart. Okay. All right, buddy. Had a boy. Good. Thank you, Steve. Fans, we got to so. finally take a break. Uh, this we got, is fun. Yes, we got Tom Popper. We haven't seen him in a while. Has Chris it's good been to see you guys. I listen hour? to you all the time now because I'm in L.A. driving around. Right. As soon as I get in the car, bam, it's you guys. All right, thank you, Tom Papa. Enjoy your uh, cupcake from Sprinkles. We thank just went you. two hours without a break. My God. <laughs> we got Chris Shuren outside the studio from the Yes oh, Network. I apologize. I had no idea he was out there. Shit. He's, he's oh, totally good. fine. Everything's fine. Everything's good here. And uh, Michael McKee is going to be in a little later today. I'm going to um, be in better... Boston this weekend yeah, where telling jokes. Where are you going to be there, I'm going to be at Laugh Boston okay. doing uh, Friday and Saturday shows. Very nice. And it's TomPapa.com for all your dates. Your thank you. We got Chris Shearn from uh, the Yes Network. He sneaks in a lot of Jimmy's characters in his play-by-play. Uh, -play. Yes, he does. He's a <laughs> That's good hilarious. So uh, we're finally inviting him in to That's hang. That's good. And then, uh, yeah, Michael McKeon from uh, Better Call Saul a little later today. You better. Jimmy? I, yeah, I've, uh, besides my chip animation, which is up, if you want to contribute to that, you can just go to my website. There's a link. Um, Red Bank, the Count Basie Theater, Ooh. March 3rd. Huntington is sold out. Uh, Montclair. Uh, March 5th with there are only upper balcony tickets left and we are That's showing theater. Yeah, I love that place I love that place the Conor McGregor uh, Dos Anjos fight afterwards so it's going to be great to hang and I'm sure Chip will at least fucking do one of the rounds <laughs> and then I have Indianapolis Cleveland and Grand Rapids Michigan uh, I've never been to Indianapolis or uh, Grand Rapids uh, and uh, the Cleveland Hard Rock I'm returning you're going to be well received there I hope so very cool that's it alright uh, Chris Scher next stay there alright we got a busy show today our pal Tom Papa's in the uh, studio. It's so good to be back with you guys. We don't get to see him much, man. You're doing that L.A. thing. It's so nice. 
The kids are all right. The house is all right. The wife's okay. Everybody's, everybody's good. Everybody's doing their thing. Everybody's good. Living their life. Going to a lot of birthday parties. I'm baking a lot of bread. I'm baking sourdough bread. That's my new thing at the house. Why? I don't know. My friend got me into it. To making sourdough oh, bread. He Tom. said "friend" in air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we got to go rescue Tom from LA. I, if I he's had now a couple bread. <laughs> I got a couple gigs canceled, like during the blizzard and stuff, and I was just sitting around at home. And uh, to make sourdough bread is like this weird process where it's like a living thing. It's called a starter. It's yeah. This living like culture on your counter. You just put flour and water, and then yeast that's just all around us. Yeah floats into it and starts eating the flour yeah. and it becomes the basis of this sourdough bread it became like this intoxicating process because <laughs> i was just sticking around at home i had no gigs so i just started making bread then the family's like where's the bread we want more bread so i'm in there like baking <laughs> bread like a schnook you're just fascinated by the yeast coming down to eat now it's this living thing that just is always you have to feed it they say you got to feed the starter every couple days don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not fascinated with your cooking show <laughs> hi chris welcome hi, to the show how are you? What, but I, but hey, I am going? fascinated by this. That sounds weird. It is what weird. What do you mean you got to feed it? That's what sourdough bread is. It's a living fungus. And where do you get the yeast from? Can you? Like, you it comes from the sky. So you're from not the air. You're not really feeding it. It's around us all the time. There's oh. yeast no, in the you, air. There's yeast Thank in you. the That's air. That's why I'm Thank fascinated, you. Chris Shern. In the no, air, just, just floating around, just sitting here while yeah. fucking because, because Tom I, did his fucking borderline homosexual cooking hour. And the family likes when I bake the bread. I can't. I noticed I was lactating, so I. Decided, did you know there's yeast in the air? I get the infections and I drink cranberry juice. I know. I know it's a problem. <laughs> you threw me off by saying you have to feed this thing, but you're not really feeding it. No, it's you like, are yeah, feeding I it. I say that now, when I point to my dick. It's Sorry. Now, you're not feeding it if the yeast is just coming. It's sitting in a jar. Right. The starter is yeah. a living fungus in this jar. Right. And to keep it alive, you have to put flour and water in every week. Oh, that's and the it feeding. Eats it. Okay, oh, and it gotcha. eats it and grows. Now I got gotcha. And then you, yeah, it's fucking disgusting. It, that's this where sounds sour, horrible. This is sourdough bread, and this I love is, sourdough bread. I, I love sourdough bread. This is where it comes from. Let me correct myself. I used to love sourdough bread. <laughs> Not anymore. And people have these yeah, starters. No they keep them alive for hundred years. What? The guy, yeah, the, the, it, literally this guy. One guy I know has it from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and it's been passed on through generations. Just this living starter. I mean, wait, I, but doesn't that become the bread? So don't you eat the starter you scoop, eventually? You scoop some of it off. Yeah. You make the bread out of it. Okay. And then the, what's remaining, you feed that. Wow. You keep With it alive. With the flour and the water. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm completely fascinated by this it's, for real. It really, I'm That's telling so you, it's, so, it's creepy and it's amazing. I've never wanted to kick a fucking thing <laughs> over. I would love to fucking, you know what I like to do? I like to put my dick in their starter. <laughs> now what? So they, <laughs> and now what? I am really it becomes a, a thing to keep your starter alive and, and pass it on. To all the family members, yeah. So do you do I, that at the wake, or <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right? It just keeps growing, and you keep making. Like I'm away now; I've been on the road doing some stuff. So I had had to call Facetime with my daughter last night. She had to feed the starter. <laughs> I could, just, I could just see that, the last uh, will and testament of Tom Papa being read. Uh, you get his sourdough yeah. starter. Yeah, you, you get the money in the apartment, but you get the sourdough starter. Remember that bread you liked? All right, one more question, then we can finally move on. Go ahead. Can you make anything else besides sourdough bread with your starter? You can make sourdough waffles, you can make sourdough pretzels. All right, so you has... can make whatever you want, but it's it's just based off of that sourdough. I'll tell you what you can't make okay. with it, a vagina wet, because no woman wants to fuck you when you're talking about I'm going to say that's the complete opposite. All right, you might be. It's, it's actually it's, it's actually a pretty good thing to turn the ladies on. You think so? All right. <laughs> yeah. Or you can put your penis right into the, if, the starter. If, that's if, probably if you would feel If you convince good. them that you're not gay, it's really good for you're you. You're not with convincing the me you're not gay. And I'm next to you. <laughs> Feeding sourdough starter. I just all right. That's just, it looks disgusting. I don't want to know. I I, I make <laughs> I make normal bread. I make normal Italian bread. My mother right. told me how. Hey, way to end the conversation, Chris. That's great. No, no, no. I'd rather about that than some living organism. In his house, like the fucking blob in the bowling alley. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. home and it's on your ceiling. Here's you a real man making you, bread. You can't call yourself a man until you've kneaded uh, the dough for like ten minutes straight. You know, so it's you really good tricep work. But you it's Italian go. bread. That's like, that sounds manly. Yeah, Italian bread. Sourdough's tough. It was started by the the miners up in San manly, Francisco. Well, got... I don't care what their race was. It doesn't really matter. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, oh, look at him feeding his starter. Oh. He's, he's feeding it with <clears> some flour and water right now. Yeah, you feed your starter. And then it grows. That's so weird. And you just scoop it off, and then you put it in with more flour, and then you 
You yeah. bake it. I'm, I'm okay. still fascinated it's, by the, the yeast all around us that's that you're the talking crazy about. Thing. Yeah. Because if I knew that, I would never buy yeast to make bread. Yeah. No, you don't need why, to. Why would you? It's just floating around. You have to proof. You have to sit there with the proof and the water. And the, I'm, 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 I'm done. Yeah. You're good. I, I don't want to talk about Chris bread. is good. <laughs> yes, you do. But you don't want them to mock you. <laughs> <laughs> let me know. Let me uh, tell you guys why we know Chris Shearn. All, out of nowhere, uh, people started sending us clips of you uh, doing your sports report. And you were sneaking in some uh, of Jim Norton's characters. <laughs> I was doing it very surreptitiously. Uh, that's a sophomore. Uh, Wonderful word. Though. In high school. Yeah, that's. that's that's from right out of my vocabulary book in 10th grade. That's excellent word. Um, but I was doing it very discreetly. Yeah. And one of one <laughs> of the fans, Rich Donovan, he's at Yanks 2010 or Yanks fan 2010 on Twitter. He was the one who picked up on it. I, w- I wasn't. You I weren't even going to. You were I just doing it. Yes. I didn't think anybody was going to catch on. <laughs> oh, that's great. This guy <laughs> catches on and sent it to Eric. Right. And everybody. Eric, I woke up to an email from Eric because I talk to him on Twitter all the time, and you know we I give him stuff about the Chargers, and we go back and forth about sports. But I wake up to an email, and it says, "Gonna play your clip." It was hysterical. It's gonna be. I don't know when it's gonna be. I can't promise you when it's gonna be. I can't give you a, a definitive time, but we're yeah. gonna play it. So I take my iPad, I go downstairs, and I put the show on. And in about three minutes, bang, there it is. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and when I heard you laugh, Mr. Norton, that just sent me through the roof. <laughs> oh, it made because, me so happy. Because if, if I could make you laugh, then my life is made right there. <laughs> Thank you. I'm honored that somebody is doing these ridiculous characters. I'm glad that they're torturing well, somebody else. Well, here, let me tell you how much they're torturing me, by the way. I was in my office. <laughs> oh, at, no. I was in my office at, yes, I think it was Thursday or Friday. And, you know, in... in the cuckoo's nest. One flew east, one, one flew, flew west. Yeah, one, one flew, flew over the cuckoo's nest. Right. Yes. So I'm sitting in my office, and I don't know why that just clicked into my head. But I'm going, one flew east, one flew west, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> Fuck right. yeah, you gotta put music to it. <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over. I'm like, oh my god, I need, I need like a, a Norton antivirus or something. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. He's one tough cookie, but he's also delicious. Oh god, now that's, <laughs> that's gonna be my head all day. We, uh, we gotta play a few of these, uh, just to get everyone these up to so speed. This is so great. Back after missing two games with an ankle sprain, he scored 17. Jimmy Butler who took over offensively in Rose's absence. Got a little chippy here with. What's that? <laughs> Just threw in a little what's that? <laughs> what's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> Nothing that affects the broadcast negatively. I, <laughs> and I don't want to. I don't want to like try to do an impression of no. them. I just want to get the terminology out there. Absolutely. And I think, and I think it well, works. Uh, play another one. Works here. wonderfully. All he did was catch touchdowns. Looks like he throws them here. Oh, different guy. He finds Edgar Poe. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. That was one of my favorite ones. Right? Shut, Shut up. up. <laughs> Two of those six teams have gone on to win the game that's called the word that always precedes duper and the thing that holds soup. Kirk, explain. You see, you uh, oh, can't say the real word, so I just come up with other ways to express it. Hopefully, you get a chuckle. <laughs> Doing a little Kirk, Kirk Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Kirk Cinnamon made, made the, it. Made the list too. Oh, give, me, give me one more Good if you nature. got it quick. And uh, this one, I think. Summertime. Oh my god, now he's doing it in his regular life. <laughs> oh, he's brought it to his oh, house. Oh, no, it's affecting his home. Oh, oh, you're in I trouble. drive my wife crazy with this stuff. Oh, you're in I, trouble. But, but to her credit, she puts up with it and she actually started doing the Edgar voice. Oh uh, my god. So any that should make that you happy. Any woman that does Edgar is marriage material. <laughs> yes. And, and my three year old walks around the house saying April. Oh, oh, it's tremendous. I love it. Have me. the bosses got a hold of this yet? I, do they know? Well, yeah, they, they know, know now. <laughs> <laughs> um, they know I'm here, and, you know, I, I don't really think... It, look, it, it promotes both the shows. Sure, I, don't, yeah. I don't think it's really a big deal. Probably I can turn a few more people onto the Yes Network, right, I would the, assume. The Michael K. Show, my podcast, the Chris Sheeran Show, Shameless Plug, uh, uh, Lou DiPietro and I would love to have you on. I'd love to, yeah. Um, uh, because we're going to see this lovely silly goose on April 7th at the uh, Ridgefield Playhouse in Connecticut. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. So uh, we'll be there. And Road J, 
downstairs for Jim. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah. Got Road J. <laughs> Lou and I, Lou and I are, are going to be there, so we'd like to get you on the podcast to promote it. Okay, thank you, yeah. And uh, if we can make that happen, that would be is awesome. That, is that a yes or just a thank you? Yeah, well, no, yeah. I'd love to. <laughs> I was supposed to. Here, let me tell you this. I, he's not here. I don't want to talk about him, and he's not here, but yeah. Florentine was supposed to be on my podcast, <laughs> and I sent out a uh, a request to him on Facebook or, or Twitter, and he got back to me, and then his, I guess his handler, I don't know, somebody emailed me and said, uh, what uh, what do you want to have Jim on the show for? Well, he had a show coming up. I sure. wanted him to promote it, and he talks about sports on his podcast all the time, and he's funny. I said, why not? Let's get him on. <laughs> I don't know if they looked at my Twitter follower number or listened to my podcast. <laughs> he didn't come on. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. that was... Uh, Probably, Jim probably would have come on. That doesn't yeah, make sense. Sound, yeah, that Jonathan does sound like probably, Florentine. Jonathan, Jonathan might have flaked or something. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, we really would still like to have him on. I'm sure he'll yeah. do the podcast. Yeah. 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 Uh, how long have you been doing sports? Um, I started. I really wanted to start in sports. Uh, I don't want to bore you with all the details. I'll give you the quick story. But I was at, uh, just so people out there who are in college who want to get into broadcasting know, you don't just walk into a job and get on the air. It just doesn't work like that. You have to put in your time and put in your dues. And when I first graduated, I was slicing bread at an A&P bakery at 6 in the morning. Was it sourdough? Yes. Good callback. Uh, I know the lingo. Uh, yeah, we get to go back to talking about sourdough. Yeah, bread. and I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't getting a mic. I, I wasn't, you know, getting the opportunity to be on air. I was sending tapes out back then, VHS tapes for crying out loud, oh, yeah. for nine years and Jeez. rejection letter after rejection letter after rejection letter. I was taking the hint. Well, yeah, nine years. That's and a long time, uh, I, I kept being persistent, and no one was giving me a mic, so I started doing stand up. Back in 2000. Oh, okay. Um, and I don't like to say that I did stand up because I don't want to insult you two. <laughs> so I tried stand up. How long did you try for? Like three years. Oh, I I, I, nice. But I didn't, you know, Jim, I, I, there was a lot of college loans that I had to, to, had to be paid back. So I had to have a full time job. Yeah. And I was living with my parents in lovely South River, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Nice. And, um, you know, I just had to get. I couldn't put in the time that was necessary. Like people don't get, you don't just go on stage and it magically happens. You know, you gotta come out and you can't do blue stuff in a room that isn't blue. And I learned that the freaking hard way. Yeah. Let me tell you right now. Uh, but I, I got into sports, I guess my first job when I was working at the AMP bakery was uh, also op with um, major league baseball productions. They nice. were, they were basically paying me to watch sports. Mm. So it was $9 and 54 cents an hour, but I was still, doing sports sure. in some capacity. Then I went to MSNBC. I was there for like six years because it was a steady gig and nice. it had benefits. My parents drilling that into my head. You need benefits. Was that when benefits. Rachel Maddow, was it the same cast as now? Or no, it, no, 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 no. This is when we launched. This was when, oh, this was geez. before Brian Williams was actually on Nightly News. Brian Williams had his own show on MSNBC when we started. Did he, he really? Yeah. We, we, oh, we, remember remember that. That. yeah, what 1996. Year? We launched, <laughs> we launched, I believe, July 16th, 1996, and July 18th is when Flight 800 went down. Sure. And right. they, they were, they, he was in studio, I remember live, they were trying to set up a computer because we weren't even ready for that kind of thing to happen. Jeez. And then uh, I got engaged to someone I work with, and that didn't work out. We all know how that works out, and we can get into that if you really want to. But <laughs> well, how'd it go bad? Because um, if you're getting engaged, you, you, you're pretty much sure to thinking that everything's in the figured out. Right? Must have been good. Sure. Did you, did you ever? Did you make it? Did you get married? Uh, no. If, oh, the engagement no. fell apart. It fell apart. We worked together. She went back to her ex-boyfriend. It was just really nasty. Dude. How long were you together? Uh, like a year, maybe. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it got to a point where... Uh, HR was getting involved, and oh. I was just like, you know what, I got to get out of Dodge. And Why were they getting involved? Was it was it getting uncomfortable? You guys well, were fighting at coworkers. Work? Well, th we had a message system. There were a lot of messages going okay. back and forth, <laughs> and uh, I just it wasn't a healthy work environment. So my my what buddy, kind of, what kind of message? Oh, yeah. Let's slow down, Chris. Oh exactly. boy, meet so, me in Brian Williams' office. We because <laughs> you're I mean you're in, you're engaged, so you're you're planning for a wedding. Well, and no, now, not now. Now it's no, it's I, done. Okay, yeah, then the messages start. Like, after, she's oh, back. Wow. 
wow. she's back with her ex. Because now you're stuck, now you're risking your job, right? And I couldn't do that, so I decided to be, you know, take the high road. And one of my friends was moving out to uh, San Francisco, and he's like, "You want to come live with me? I'll, I won't charge any rent." So I moved out there, and that's where I started writing. Oh, cool! That's man. where I started yeah. writing the stand up, and I came back and I started performing. And there's nothing, and I get. I mean, you guys are so good at it, and it, just sitting in your presence is phenomenal right now. Oh, I don't know. It I is. wish Opie had the same appreciation for my presence. <laughs> 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 I think my presence needs to be appreciated what by more guests. I, mean, <laughs> I don't. I know Travis is avoiding eye contact a little more than he should. Hey, Travis, how are you, buddy? How about being a little happier that I'm here, Travis? <laughs> you tell. I would like Jimmy to doesn't Bruce feel appreciated. To feel the gratitude that I offered you. Young a, Chris Shern feels. Young Paul back there takes me for granted. I walk in. I offered you a cupcake. Yes, from you Sprint certainly Coles. did. And I, they was very tempting. That was that was your welcome back uh, to the show. I know, but this body is no gift. I have to work for it. <laughs> so, uh, so you, you were trying to say. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so I uh, I went out to California and I didn't things didn't work out there. I was only there for six months, but I moved my whole life out there. Wow. And I didn't have enough money. I had burned through all my money. Uh, so I had to pack my red Pontiac Sunfire. Nice. <laughs> and take Route 80 all, all the way. way back home. And I did it oh. in two and a half days. I mean, you don't know. Wow. You have no idea mm. what, you know, what stress or anything like that is until you see a sign. You're driving to New Jersey and you see a sign, Denver, 700 miles. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, that's, that's a tough one. But you weren't, oh my paying, God. you weren't paying rent. How'd you run out of money? Yeah, exactly. I only had my, my severance from MSNBC. I, I had 4,000 maybe in my bank account when I moved out there. So you and just... most of it was going to my college loans. You were just reeling after the girl and were just like, I got to go make a I gotta change. I got to go. I got to find a job. I, no, I, I had one lined up. I okay. did. And that's a great question. And we Ooh, thank you. It, uh, Ooh, San Francisco, me... San Francisco. I thought San Jose was a hop, skip and a jump, uh, but it wasn't. I it hate to do this, but yeah. San Francisco is, is where sourdough started. <laughs> really? You know what else started there? I certainly wish that, that, I, that I wish you had more experience with. You want to talk about other things floating in the air? Oh, boy. Oh, we thought Tom had cancer. No. Oh, it was boy. a watermelon diet I was on. I apologize. No, that's okay. Anytime. Uh, I was getting a little boring there myself. So you thought you could commute to San Jose. So I thought I could that, commute that, to San yeah, Jose. Yeah, and my, yeah. and my that's first that's, far. that's pretty far. My first day. This was before Google. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Google Maps. All right. And my flip phone did not have GPS on it. But uh, I'm get, I get in the car at 7 o'clock in the morning. I had to be there at 9. So I figured I'd give myself two hours. It took me two hours to get there. Wow. Traffic is a mess out there. Uh, I get down to San Jose. Uh, I walk in. The, the job is basically 9 to 9. And they weren't paying me a lot of money. It wasn't really going to be enough to sustain living where I lived. I, I've lived in the two most expensive counties in the country, for crying yeah, out loud, San Francisco. with no money. God. <laughs> no money. Uh, but I go out there. I, what was the job? Uh, why couldn't you get a the job, job locally? I did. After that, I reached out to... But what was that job that was so important that you were going to commute for two hours? It was the girl. He had to get out of here. Well, that was it. I mean, I really wasn't thinking clearly. And and, the jo and I, I set up the job before I went out there. And then when I went out there and I went down to the job and I saw what it entailed, it just... It wasn't what I wanted to but do. what kind of job was it? All right. It was for... <laughs> it, it was like when the internet was just coming about and NBC had the, the starter internet. Yes. Yes. You had to feed it pre <laughs> pre internet. And, and it, was, right. it was called the feed, uh, the feed room, the feed room. Yeah. The NBC had this thing. They were all right. So you were trying to get a job in your, in your, right. your field. Right. That's but why I'm asking. Okay. Again, there was no sports involved. Gotcha. And it, it, that day at lunch, there was a, there was a woman who I used to work with at MSNBC who actually went out there and she and I are having lunch. And I said, I don't know if I could do this. I, I just don't know if I could do this. So I half a day, and I left. Oh my god! Wow. I, I drove. I gave up. I quit. I mean, it's not in me to do that. I'm very competitive, but I just saw the writing on the wall. Sure. And I reached out to my the the guy who used to anchor sports at MSNBC. He knew a guy at uh, KTVU out in Oakland, and I freelanced there for a little while. Wet my beak for a little bit until I couldn't do it anymore. And then I got in the car. My water pump blew around Nebraska. <laughs> Uh, so I had to go get that fixed, but y you have no idea 
your faith in humanity is restored. Mm -hmm. The people you meet across the country, they were so nice. I had a guy driving back from, uh, from San Francisco to Montreal who saw my car a mess, stopped, made sure I was okay. I wish he was an Uber driver. (laughs) (laughs) Because then the story would end. Yes, it would. How about that guy? I want to jump in and ask a question, though. though. This is interesting to me. Okay. The girl, did you ever talk to her again? We talk now. My wife doesn't like it, but oh. yeah, we're, we're, we're friends oh, wow. again. Okay. Yeah, we're friends again. Oh, boy. A lot of people don't understand why we are, but w- why uh, are you guys friends? I'm like, is she married? She's married yeah. to the guy. No, 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 no. She right. uh, actually to one of my friends who used to work there, and they're very happy, and all it's, right. it's all good. Okay, so you went out there to get away, and you I went out there to get away. Did you get over her when you were out there? I did. Okay. When I when I came back, I worked tables like it was a wedding. <laughs> okay, you just I was pretty much money. yeah whatever sure. you could do. All right, yeah. I so, said, um, it's, what do you do when you break up? It's like, you gotta fucking do something so you don't, you know, just sit there and obsess over it. Were you getting angry looking at her at work? Like, were they angry messages? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the most part, I was just trying to stay quiet, you know, put baby in the corner. That was mm-hmm. me. I mean, I was miserable. I'll be honest. I was miserable. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't initiate the message sending. Oh. She would start. What would she say if she left, left you? About her boyfriend or, you know. Oh, she, she wanted to make it hurt. Oh, she was, she was brutal. Why oh, was she talking wow. about her boyfriend? Because it was her ex who she went back to and uh, it's so much better with him and blah, blah, blah. Well, why blah, would she blah, do blah. that? So that means she was pissed at we were something kids. you did. No, we were no. kids. Right. We were kids. But so it's one of those, yeah, yeah. And Plus, you know all the shit she said about him. Like when you were dating, she's like, I hated him. His oversized genitals. <laughs> I, I, was, I can't handle it. That, you know, they're terrible. They're That's pleasant. exactly what it was. <laughs> I think it's tough to be friends with exes. It is. And I'm, you know, there's another one that I'm, I just don't talk to. I mean, I'm married. I, I have enough. I have enough with my two little kids. I mean, you have two little kids too. Yes, I do, Chris. I, and, and they take up most of my time. Yes. And I just. I, yes. And Tom, you have you have kids yep. too, so you know what the deal is. I mean, I, my friends want me to go out. They want me to hang out. I just. I'm not in it anymore. No. You know, if 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 they want me to go out and have odd drink, I'll go out and have odd drink. And I know, like, I have to shut it down because if I don't, it's good night, Chris. Yeah. And that's not good. So I mean, it is what it is. Chris has a drinking problem. No. <laughs> He um, he beat a girl up at work and had a drink. Frank the tank. <laughs> Frank the wow. tank. And it feels so good when it hits your list. Yeah. So something happened. And you yeah. had to relocate to San Francisco. <laughs> and then they were on his track, so he took a, a job in San Jose. HR is involved. And he blew out his water pump, they say, with, yes. with, with the telephone pole. Yes. And he thinks that guy was just being nice when maybe that guy was probably looking for something else. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, what, a, what a sniper. What a sniper line that was. Oh, I, I wish like he was Chris. an Uber driver. That was tremendous. <laughs> that Uber story is fucked up. Oh, my up. God. What and happened? The, uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, an Uber yeah. driver was yeah. the one that went on that shooting oh, that was spree. A, yeah. He was Apparently. making pickups. Dude, he was, was, Captain it, Kangaroo really fucking it, went ballistic. Jeez. <laughs> oh, in, in between killing people, he was picking up uh, rides. Yeah. yeah. In between? Yes. Killing? And one of the ladies uh, reported him on Facebook basically saying, you know, this guy, uh, uh, do you have that? I don't have it in front of me. She said he, he was up. driving his unsafe. She gave him one star. She said, I didn't mind him firing out the window, but when he didn't slow down for the <laughs> yeah. stop sign, I knew I had to get out. Jeez. I think it was a lady. She yeah, she had a horrible experience where her, her boyfriend or somebody had a bad experience. She went right on Facebook to warn people that this is a bad Uber driver, oh not God. knowing that this guy is killing people as well. Holy Supposedly, cow. when the person was wow. in with this guy that she talked about on Facebook, he was going 80 miles an hour. He sideswiped the car. He was driving in the wrong direction down a road. Did she say, just sir, shooting you stop? Shooting people as he went? Uh, well, no, no, no. no, no, no. no. Uh, here it is. Attention, uh, Kezu peeps. He snapped. This Uber driver named Jason drives a silver Chevy Equinox is not a safe ride. A little bit ago, my fiance got a ride with him, and he was driving very erratically. They sideswiped a car, blowing through a stop sign at Henderson Castle in West Main Hill, and the driver continued driving. Then the, main, uh, then the man proceeded to drive 80 miles an hour down West Main, swerving in and out of oncoming traffic. Jeez. Uh, despite Matt pleading with... Uh, uh, this driver to pull over. He refused. Finally, when we slowed down, when he slowed down the vehicle, Matt was able to get out. He was acting completely normal throughout all of the erratic driving. Please share if you are in the Kazoo area. Uh, 
Kezu area. Uh, stay safe. 911 was called, but surprisingly, they didn't seem all that concerned. I'm thankful that no one was hurt yet. Hoping this man will be arrested or hospitalized soon if he has a medical condition causing this behavior. There Not was, knowing that this is the guy that now is shooting people in between. And there, up rides. Oh my God. there was another couple that got in the car. It was either two guys or, or a guy and a girl, and they asked the guy if he knew what was going on yeah. about the shooter. I think oh, they really? He goes, no. I don't know. That's, and he goes, are you the shooter? He yeah, goes, yeah. no, not me. Yeah, you're not the shooter, are you? Witnesses describe rides there with accused oh, Michigan oh, gunmen. Geez. And I think he said something like, no, I'm just tired. Or Yes, right? no, I'm just tired. Yeah, no, I'm just tired. That is messed. He gave a literal answer. They were just joking with him, and he's like, no, I'm just tuckered no, out. I'm just Jeez. tuckered Jeez. out. That's weird. That's not good for Uber. If you want, <laughs> no. no, that's fine. I mean, it happens everywhere. It's about time. That's how good a company Uber is. They're so big that they want to, you know, it's at the post office. You're getting some maniacs. <laughs> yeah, it's what are the odds of two oh. Uber drivers being fucking murderers? I can't wait to Uber my little self all over town. <laughs> Oh, Uber's not happy. Their statement is like, yeah. oh, he passed the background check. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know which what is, to say. Which yeah. is just putting a sticker on your car. Right. <laughs> oh, man. So That's terrible. How many did he end up killing? Six or five he killed, I think, and six he shot. I'm, I'm, man, yeah. um, killed six. Awful. Killed, killed six. 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 All from people. his car? Was he yeah. just like driving oh, I don't around, know. Was shooting he tra- people from his car? Tra- Travis, what was he doing? I don't know. Oh, uh, I think he was, yeah, I think he was stopped. Well, he went into a Cracker Barrel, and I know he killed... Cracker Barrel parking lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he shot the people in the car. And then oh, took off and, oh, yeah. here, oh, I got another customer, oh, and then God. went and picked up somebody else. I bet you he was doing that for alibi reasons, or no? Oh, maybe. I, I think it, it sounds I, like I he was out of his uh, yeah, he's, he's just yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's just insane. Okay. Man, I think that, yeah. across Bingo. the board, insane. Yeah, he might be right. <laughs> Worst nightmare. Police say gunmen chose victims at random. That sucks. Kalamazoo, Michigan. Nick Griffin was just performing there this weekend. Um, but, oh, my God. We know it set the guy off. Yeah. Nick's a little ornery. He's very funny, but he's ornery. <laughs> what makes him ornery? I don't know. He's just cranky on stage. I like. He's really funny. He's really watch. funny. Yeah. I, I've never yet. heard of him before. What about the Daytona 500, Chris? Did yeah, you see it? I didn't the see it. The closest I, finish ever? Like, I, I got to be honest. I didn't see any of it. Oh, okay. Uh, supposedly they, uh, I don't even know who won. Hamlin? Denny Hamlin Denny wins Hamlin. by a nose. It basically won by four inches, I think they're saying. Really? Oh, no. Really? Fucking my Did you- Here they come to the line! This is the finish of the Daytona 500! Side by side, bouncing off each other! Wow! That's I think the- it was Denny Hamlin. I Somebody it. lost a lot of money because of that four inches. Something like four inches, I think they said. Well, the guy slammed on the brakes at the end, the guy who was like second, because he felt that their speed was unsafe. <laughs> he was yes, slow. he was a tr- if he's exceeding the limit. I think, all right, here's the, uh, you, you're going to try. photo finish. Look at that. That's, well, you can't wow. see this. Wow. Wow. That's, I thought it was the red car. It's right out of Stroker Race right there. The red, wow. The red car was definitely in the lead with uh, it was. a mere it was. 20 you're feet right. left. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Something like that. Yep. But then it looks again, like he, a little more than four inches. He put on his flashers. Wow, that's pretty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the red car was. We're watching it. The red car is. Uh, they're yeah, pretty close. Oh, the other guy's ahead. Somebody got loose in the turn there. The red car just got close, almost bumping. Very unsafe driving. Red car is definitely in the, in, the lead, lead, in the lead, in the lead, in the lead. Step and then on the gas, what Hamlin, are you doing? right that there. That last bank. Wow. That last bank. Yeah. No, he's still the red is still in the lead. Yeah. Optical illusion. And then uh, his red's the on the inside. And he grabbed at the. Wow, that's what? unbelievable. Truex Jr. In the wow. Who? Martin Truex Jr. I don't know any... I don't care about racing. Uh, when Dale died, I kind of punched out. But I still... Did you guys say that? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty great. All right, that's, that's the sound I make when I come. Can we hear that again? <laughs> Oh, when you hear that, it's time to fucking get in there and rinse your hair is out that, in the sink. Uh, is that the Iron Sheik? Oh, yeah. yeah. I fuck your ass at finish well, line. Keep that playing that. I want to hear the rest of that. Get the bad cancer. Trouble final. Huh? Ultima vuelta. Martin Trucks, que segundo. Empieza a subir. Aquí está Terry. Aquí está Terry. Aquí está Terry. Más arriba todavía Brad Keselowski. Matt Kenseth desde el tramo final. Aquí estamos en la recta posterior. Vamos a la curva 3. Busca una victoria más en las 500. Viene Denny con todo. Viene Denny ha subido. Ha bloqueado Matt. Se va a tocar. Se va a tocar. Va a ser Denny. Va a ser Denny. Va a ser Denny. Contra Truex. Contra Truex. Hola. Denny Truex. 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 Se va a ir Denny. Denny. Denny Hamlin. 
yellow. <laughs> there, was a, there was a yellow car that was coming up to be the third one in a Yeah. And he got fucking. Pu- he got pushed right he out got, of the way. He was like me at a bar trying he to lost, get a drink. <laughs> he lost his air. That was, he uh, got that was Kenseth. Kenseth, they, they didn't give him anything. How do you they lose lo- your, he lost his line. You see how there's no car behind him? They leave him go out there, and then he just loses it. He'll fall back all the way because he loses his draft. Wow. And he'll fall oh, all the way back. That's about wind and draft? Yes. Oh. Yes. You have other cars that push you. You get behind a car, it'll, it'll actually take you. That's yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? You get behind a car, it'll take you. Wait, the Paul actually knows about this shit? Yeah. If you're behind yeah. it. It's restrictor plate racing. It's uh, On these tracks, it's a super speedway, so it's about all about wind and aerodynamics. So if you get in a line, two cars could jet out ahead of each mm-hmm. other while everybody's in a pack. Oh, so do they understand this? Yeah. They <laughs> 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 That's bad because he just dropped back. I'm like, why would you take your? Yeah. He, got he looks like I got this all wrapped up. Got they the they let him out to draft. Yeah, they What's let him out the to line of draft. What's that? The draft line is. You see how the cars are lined up two and two, two yeah, and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're push. They're literally pushing each other. And when Ken, when uh, Kenseth loses that draft of of Hamlin, he'll just fall. He he, he almost lost it and went into the wall. Yeah, he you think he knew the draft accident. line got yeah. fucked up? Oh boy, I bet you he did. And here's the ironic part. Usually, I don't like a draft. Dad, you boys continue talking. Let me just soak in the victory of that joke. Wow, wait. Oh my goodness. I had no idea that wind and draft. Yeah, yeah. I tried. And they and they I Paul, you know this racing. too. You have to know this too that they they didn't uh, have restrictor plates. Mm. What does that mean? No so, restrictor plates. Oh my god. What do they eat on? It slows the cars down. It slows them down. How do you make your bread without a restrictor plate? Oh my plate. god, are you going to get a nice crust <laughs> from what? On the sourdough. It helps slow the cars down. Because in, instead they'd be going 215, 230 yeah. miles per hour, so it's a little bit safer. You watch uh, a lot of uh, racing? I used to, not anymore. So these oh. are faster than the one with restricted plates? No, they're slowed down more because they have restricted plates. Oh, these guys do. Yeah, well, they, they do. Uh, one, one I have one on my hips, if yeah, you know what do, I mean. They do about 190, 198 now. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried. I, I, I never got into NASCAR. My brother's, yeah. my brother's really into it. My brother's To watch too. it with somebody that knows the, what's going on, that's kind of fun. How do you think I know Yeah, because then bit when he was yeah. explaining shit, I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. And I did get into it a little bit, but then I try to like watch it by myself, and then I'm lost again. It's not that hard though, because you're like, all right, they're going in a circle. Oh. Whichever one gets there first is the winner. Yeah. Got it. Car- <laughs> Carlin had a great uh, NASCAR bit that he did. Um, I remember I told you Carlin was one of my. It's, sure. It's Carlin. It's you. Uh, there's. I used to watch those HBO Rodney specials oh, growing God. up all God. the time. I, I God, I, I I have them on tape. I have them on VHS for crying out loud. They're still at my mother's house. They're probably collecting dust. But. Well, we found the Carlin thing. Let me play this. The Sh- great bit about uh, sh- auto racing. There you go. Exciting shit. That's why I watch auto racing. Yeah. That's the only reason I watch auto racing. Injury. Race. I'm waiting for some accidents, man. I want to see some cars on fire. I don't care about a bunch of redneck jackoffs driving 500 miles in a circle. 500 miles in a circle? Children can do that, for Christ's sake. Doesn't impress me. I want to see some schmuck with his hair on fire running around punching his own head. Trying to put it out. I want to see the pits explode. (laughs) I want to see a car doing a 200 mile an hour cartwheel. Hey, where else besides auto racing am I going to see a 23 car collision and not be in this son of a bitch? And if a car flies out of control, lands in the stands and kills 50 spectators, fine. Fuck them. Serves them right. They pay to get in. Let them take their chances with everybody else. Good for him, Carl. Good old George Carlin. Yeah. Nice. Language is a little what, what else is it, What else is going on in sports, Chris? Uh, what do we got? This is pretty much... It's a, a dead time for right sports. After, right after the Super Bowl. Gets a little rough. Yeah, yeah, because then you got the NHL All-Star game. They take a break. Then the NBA took their nine-day nine, nine day break. So it gets a little gets a little uh, well, lost. Well, but spring training You can started, talk about pitchers so, and yeah. catchers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, pitchers and catchers baseball. reported. It's and, uh, way too fucking early to start talking baseball. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too early to start talking baseball. Have you been to never. the new Yankee Stadium? I have. I have not. I, I do want to go. It's great. It's great. I it hear it's great. lovely. You still haven't been to the Yankee you haven't Stadium? Been? No, I was going to go awesome. last year. I should have called. Well, we'll the have to. It's been a long time, Jimmy. That. I would like to go. I will fix that. For I'm going to bring a mitt and try to catch a ball like all the boys. Yay. <laughs> Your video down in Tampa. Oh, with our chip. Oh yeah. my God, that woman that was sitting there. Oh, she that. Was- the, the cringeworthy chipness that was going on there. <laughs> and just that woman's face. Were you with Bob? Bob Kelly? I wasn't. Bob oh my filmed God. it. It was <laughs> so great. good. Bob was Kelly, tremendous. I wouldn't have thought to do this, but Chip was annoying. Look how close A-Rod was. 
Those are great seats, Mr. Norton. Yeah, second row. Hey, where's the batter? <laughs> the the batter woman's should face batter. right there. Batter should be right She's not batter. happy. Hey, Ron, hit a home run or something. <laughs> Hey, Chase Utley, where are they chasing you to? They should walk at the game. The bat is not that. Come on, Ron. <laughs> hit a home run or something. You can do it. Hey, Ron, hit the ball out of the park or something. Do it with a chipper. There's the batter. Swing. Swing the bat or something. Hit a home run because Sam says you can't do it. Sam's a piece of garbage. Hey, Chase, what are you, a bank or something? You could do it. Lucky 13, hit a home run or something. Or try to at least for something. Hey, you got something on your back. Hey, Ron, hit a home run or something. Got something on your back. It's going to make it too heavy. Where are they chasing you to, Chase? You got something on the end of your back. It's too heavy. He's... It's 10 feet away from these guys. Yeah, they were really unhappy. Uh, <laughs> they didn't like him. No. no. <laughs> and A-Rod had Reggie turned and looked at me at one point. Did he Reggie, really? yeah, because in this, uh, Mike Calta, there's a show down there, it got, he, they, they Tampa Spring Training. Mm-hmm. So to the right of where they were sitting is where Reggie was sitting. It was fucking Reggie. Yeah. And at one point, it's like, you know, make a home run, get a base hit or something. And fucking Reggie turned like, who's this asshole? <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> Mr. October had to fucking hear that. <laughs> he had to deal with you. Yeah. Let's go to Dave in San Diego. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi, Dave. And they basically got like 40 sensors on those cars, and they can tell within a Oh, I don't like that, man. You should be allowed to say what you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's too many people. Sorry. Go ahead. A bomb twice. Go right ahead. Oh, yeah. They're not allowed to say what they want, Jim. But, no, basically, I mean, within a quarter inch, you can tell who's in the lead, who's passing, who, who was this or that. I mean, they got a lot of technology going on. And do they bump into each other and just keep driving? Yeah, it's bump draft. Oh my god, it's just nuts. How do you how do you go into that? That ballsy, I'll say that. No shit. Spinning in circle, and they usually survive them ninety percent of the time. Oh. I guess they're okay, right? Yeah, yeah for the most part. That's but a dangerous... considering the the wrecks you've seen over the years. It's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. That they... You know, well, the only safety they survive a lot of this. Wow. Well, the, the cars weigh thirty-one pounds. The safety, wow. the safety's gotten a a lot better since Dale Earnhardt Sr. passed away at Daytona. Did this right. guy die or no? Mike no. Harmon. No, he lived. He got he hit the wall, spun, and a guy hit him doing almost two hundred. Right. And he's alive. And I don't want to speculate. While but, his car's on fire, he gets yeah, hit by, yeah. by my, another d- driver. My brother, who is my older brother, who is really into this, like like your brother, yeah. he said when when Dale Earnhardt was in his final lap at Daytona, he would always take his seatbelt off. Or unhinge his seatbelt at least. Why? Because he could get out of the car faster if he wins. Coming home. Yeah, he's, yeah it probably became a. But uh, how, how uh, much uh, faster you, do you need to get out of the car? And he he hit the wall going at least a hundred. Sure, hundred ninety. Did he have no seatbelt on? He was a cowboy. I don't, I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't want to speculate, but they were. You know, the, I think the guy who went up to the car to check on him knew he was dead. He had blood That's coming right. out of his right, eyes. Right. It was it was terrible. Oh. I didn't know that I think was he had his a, thing. He had a basal skull fracture. What's that? It just it snapped. His head pretty oh. much snapped off from so his body. So it was body. very immediate. Quick. <sighs> You would hope so. Yeah. You bring nothing but delight to the show. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> Which one is Dale's fresh? <laughs> we might have to just, want, just want some fun sport facts. <laughs> really? I to so I hear how the Rangers are doing. <laughs> Talk about LeBron James for two minutes. <laughs> Which one is Dale? <laughs> Number that, three. That, yeah. that wreck killed him right there? Well, oh, yeah. It, they didn't have the safer barriers back then. Yeah. That was just a pure concrete one. Yeah. And not that that didn't look bad, but it looked like he hit it and then slid sideways. Yeah, that didn't actually, look bad. this is also slow motion too. And, yeah, but a lot of people at the time are surprised that he died. See, he gets loose from that crash. They're, oh, yeah, that's hitting yeah. hard. But See, they're surprised he died from. But that. that's where the seatbelt thing comes Theory, into play. Right, yeah. right. Wow. Golden State Warriors. Anyone going to beat them if they I, stay healthy? Honestly, I, although they got their asses handed to them the other they night, did, they did. They did. Thirty-two but points. That, was that, it? That's going to happen every once in a while. You know, you're not going to have your best every night. But this team is is scary. How, How many 40, losses do they have? Like Forty-nine six, and five. The record five. is ten losses. By the, yeah, the, the Bulls, Bulls in by from 95. Was it 95? I think 95, 96. They had Somewhere around 72 there. and 10 when was, Rodman right. so was on the team. Yeah, They got Jordan a very good Pippen. chance at uh, beating that. They're ahead of that. Yeah, and, and I think uh, both the Warriors and the Spurs are still undefeated at home. 
Really? Which is ridiculous. Yeah, you're yeah, right. The, the uh, Warriors Spurs are, 20, are 28 and 0 yeah. at home. Spurs, Spurs just don't lose at home. Yeah, no one's really paying attention. I mean, they're paying attention to the Spurs, obviously. Well, the, the Warriors Spurs only have nine losses. Yeah, and, and the Warriors, you got to put it into perspective. They, they beat the Bulls, the Cavs. And the Spurs, yeah. in, in less than a week, they beat all three of those teams, which are top teams in the league, sure. by 30 or more points Man. in less than a week. <laughs> Crazy. And Steph Curry just shoots from half court. And, and the guy, he's, he's unbelievable. It's amazing. Unbelievable. He is ridiculous. He's fun to watch. Yes. The whole team is fun to watch. They have so much talent on that team. Uh, Dale also had a seat that wasn't uh, re- uh, regulated. Uh, it wasn't yeah. the uh, regulation and wore an open faced helmet. Is that true, Paul? Do you know that? He was a cowboy. About yeah, he wore an open faced yeah. helmet. He was a throwback, man. Yeah. He, he was just. Old school. Yeah. Uh, Badass. Intimidator. He didn't get that. Uh, was he a rough driver? Nothing, huh? He was a ballsy driver? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why he earned, he earned that, that nickname. And they have a, a minor league baseball team down at Kannapolis called the Kannapolis Intimidators. Huh. After him. Okay, let me say hi to Chuck. Some useless facts for you there. Is this our Chuck? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Hi, Chuck. Why do you always say Chuck, afraid so? Chuck's going to correct me. First of all, first thing, it wasn't his seat, or our seat. It was the way his belts were installed. All right. Second of all, y'all were talking about Rex and stuff. I just got back from down there early this morning. Yeah. You need to Google the NASCAR truck wreck. On Friday night, if you want to see a fucking wreck. Think. I've been going to them races for probably 30 years. I don't believe I've ever seen one go that high in the air flip. What is I it? A they, truck? A truck wreck? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have trucks that race in NASCAR, and they ran Friday night at Daytona. All right, we're and looking. I, I, I think you rolled like 13 times. All right, we're all, No, you had wow. it, Paul. Just let it play out. Yeah, let it play from here. Hold on, we're, we're with you, oh, Chuck. Here he goes. We're with you. And Boom. Boom. He's trying. You know how hard he's hitting the brake right there. Oh wow! <laughs> Holy shit! This guy's spinning a lot. Yeah. Jeez. Reminds me like when I drive. Times of. Yep. It, it wasn't that he was high in the air. It was more that he was tumbling down the track. Yep. Chuck. I jumped out. Wow. Is he dead, Chuck? Chuck. No shit. He got out and walked out of it. Wow. How we? That's crazy. It's crazy. Good God. Yeah, those those cars, they build them safe as hell. Uh, that LIE is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, I saw y'all. Ah, they that. should make them. Thanks, Chuck. They should make them Thanks, Chuck. race Thanks, actual pickup trucks that aren't modified. Yeah. That's well, just, they're just like a car. Of course they, they are. They just look like a pickup. They're, 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 yeah, they're they, not close they, to a pickup, an actual they pickup. Slow, they, they slow them down, and they got don't have as much aerodynamics. And all that. It's really better racing because that, like that guy was saying, I don't remember who's on the show, but Chris that, Sharon that, from Yes Network. Yeah, that's smaller the leadership in the last twenty. Yeah, that's all it is. It's smaller the leader. Yeah, when somebody fucked up and Rex, they follow the leader, and then it's just who's ever in the right place. The guy in the front usually has an advantage because he's in clean air. The air back behind the leader is what they call dirty air. And it's all moving around. That's why you see the cars on those in car cameras kind of jumping around and moving because they're in that dirty air. They, yeah. Dirty they, air. Oh. They get loose. I'll dirty tell you, air. That sounds ballsy. very racist. <laughs> the uh, pit <laughs> crews are ballsy, and so is the guys who fucking come out there with, and put the fires out. Oh, yeah. God. They're running onto a track with a lot of speeding. Do well, those cars <laughs> just slow down? And, and they try. Stop? I mean, they the try time. to slow down and all that crap. But No, I mean, by the next time the lap comes back around, will they all oh, stop? They, they oh, yeah, have yeah, the caution yeah. out. They have yeah, the caution warning out. Flags They'll slow down to about 60 yeah. miles. They have yellow lights around the They won't even stop the race if one of the guys is on fire. Yeah, nah. <laughs> Gotta right. keep going, right, Chuck? How crazy yeah, that, dirty, there... that dirty air is like Jimmy when he eats fucking ice cream. Yes, it is. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> All right, boys, I'm gonna go. I'll see. You. Bye, Chuck. That's it. A nice clean phone call from Chuck. We didn't have to get into any of that racist stuff that Chuck enjoys. <laughs> How crazy they make these things that you could survive that. Yep, it's nuts. I hear you. All right, we should take a break. We got Michael uh, McKean coming in today. Oh! 
Oh, from Better Saul. Better Call Saul. Oh. A very good show. He's very, very good in it. I binge yes. watched the whole fucking uh, first season, Friday and early Saturday. It's good stuff. I'm all caught up. Good very job. Good show. Mission accomplished. Uh, I and I uh, never saw the other one. The uh, the uh, the Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. Never seen Breaking Bad, but I really? but I've seen every episode. It's of, definitely uh, worth seeing. The writing in Breaking oh, Bad. Oh, I'm gonna go so and yeah, finally absolutely. start watching Breaking Bad. Another assignment. I don't appreciate any of the drug stuff. I think it's a bad message. I mean, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really it's really well acted, and, and the storylines like there's some brilliant writing. Well, in now it. that I can pass out iPads to my kids, I can I, I got my TV back. There you go. I, I'm finally starting to watch shows again. <laughs> Open it up, nice. Those, open it up, those eggs. It's nice <laughs> for fifteen minutes. All right. the surprise egg eggs oh, videos. God. Oh god, they're a lot. They're, yeah, they're, they're like great. zombies. Oh, I love it. I'm gonna do one. Chip's doing one. <laughs> yeah, you yep. keep saying that. You gotta oh. do one. Oh look, a bullet. It's gonna be all kinds of weird shit <laughs> inside your egg. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all about Minecraft right now. Oh really? Yeah. My five year old could uh, stay on the Minecraft for hours. Yeah. And it's addicting. That, and then it gets kind of nice, and you're like, ah, I gotta be a parent, though, I think. He's been on it for five hours. I gotta stop him. I think I gotta tell him to turn off the fucking Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. But then I'm, I'm watching Better Call Saul <laughs> over and over again, trying to get to episode 10 before the weekend was over. Hey, that's a good parent. But uh, yeah, we're going to talk to good old uh, Michael next about his fine role in Better Call Saul. Mm, Plays Chuck. Better. Yeah, yeah, the brother he plays squirrely brother, Bob Odenkirk's brother. Yeah, and he's so good. He is good, and he's he hates tremendous. electricity. Oh, you seen it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I saw Tin the whole foil hat. Tin foil. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When he goes out to get the paper. Oh my god, <laughs> that's crazy. He, he's playing it perfect. Oh yeah, he's great at it. He's awesome because he's yeah. playing it like it's a there logical it way to be. He's not acting like a maniac. He's playing it like yeah. this is the logical way to mm -hmm. think. Right. And he was a big, a big deal lawyer, and then uh, all hell broke loose with this guy. He's all fucked up mentally. Well, the minute he walks in, we're going to start firing at the questions. Where's Squiggy? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, <little> man. <laughs> so we'll talk to him uh, probably next by the time we get back. Tom Papa in the studio. We haven't seen him in a while. Tom's going to be at uh, Laugh Boston Friday and Saturday. Boston. Any other dates you want to push? Um, Down the road, I guess. So TomPapa.com, yeah, com, good. right? Yeah. And then the podcast is still doing yeah, well, right? Yeah, Papa's rocking, rocking and rolling. And sourdough bread. And sourdough bread tips for anyone that's interested. Chris Shearn, thank you so much, sir. <laughs> hey, no problem. Uh, where pleasure. do we see you? The Yes Network? Yes Network, uh, the Michael K. Show for afternoons from 3 to 7. Also the Chris Shearn Show. Are you working on that show? Podcast. I, just the... Uh, Highlights that you see, right, right, uh, on the yes side, not on the radio side. Gotcha. Uh, the Chris Sheeran Show podcast on the iTunes uh, network and uh, yesnetwork dot com. And I really thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate no, it. No, it was great finally meeting you. Yeah, and, you uh, we're going to go to a Yankee game together this Absolutely. year. Absolutely, nice. let's do that. Yes, buy we'll me a hot dog. Up. Those nice seats behind. Is uh, Chipper going to come? It's, uh, Chip, the gym's not going. It's going to be Chris. <laughs> let, let me fucking Chip. Let me ask you one question sure. before I leave. I just let it happen. Oh, sorry, I about my process. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's the election season, your characters, who would be on the ticket that you would vote for of your characters? Who would you put together? I had Cin <laughs> I had Kirk Cinnamon and uh, Chip together because it's sweet and salty. They balance each yes. other out. Chip would be president, <laughs> um, and Kirk would kind of go in and clean up the mess. Well, you know, he was just trying to be a little honest. But, um, <laughs> and I think, you know, in charge of education, obviously, would be a... a, 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 a Paul Hargis, uh, <laughs> Sen Senator Paul Hargis. That's a good ring to it. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, from Delaware is uh, Edgar Mellencamp. <laughs> he just seems like a, a junior senator from Delaware who's had a, a lot of scandal. Um, he's involved with the dentistry industry. And uh, there'd be a whole, I have to think of my other characters. I can't remember. It would be Chip and Kirk. You're what about right. Ted? Ted Shackler. Yeah, but Ted uh, Ted would be a spokesman. He'd be the White House spokesman. The, oh, was that's a problem. perfect. Ted would kind of come out. That's and, oh, perfect. President Jefferson was trying to say <laughs> is that the Jews were welcome to stay. He said it wrong. He was repeating what his mother had told him. You know, there would be a lot of covering for what Chip said that his mother had said. That's a perfect first. job for Ted. It certainly uh, is. All right. It's all right than all our Thank other you, choices. Buddy. Thank Thanks, you, Chris. We'll see you soon. All right, buddy. Got Tom Pop in the studio. So good being back with you, fellas. You're coming back uh, another day this week, too, right? Yeah, I might come in on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday? Sounds good. Should I come back? Fuck yeah. Do the whole week if you're in town. Michael McKean, my God. Welcome, wow. sir. Wow. Right there. How are you? How are you? Hey, Michael. Hiya. 
Welcome to the show, my friend. What, what makes you think so? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying you're a liar, but I, I happen to agree with it. Um, we'll which, see how it goes. My we'll, high we'll, points, yes. We'll start off at, in a nice place. I, I assume that's what we should do. You look very awake and happy. A lot of guys come in, they're not, uh, not in the best mood well, in this hour. Well, that's, that's what we do. <laughs> I, I was just making note of the fact that you go, you go to these places where people work early in the morning, and either they're great about it mm-hmm. or they want you to pay yeah you know what i mean <laughs> that's and, it uh yeah but I, I, everyone's very nice i uh i saw you on the calendar that you were coming in and i'm like i never saw a better call saw oh, let me finish okay. i binge watched the whole first season oh, and i'm goodness. up to date oh, good good and, it, and uh you know i started watching for the show i'm not gonna lie to you mm-hmm. and then i was like wow this is a really good show and i i, I watched the whole first season in uh, one night and you never saw breaking wow. bad never saw breaking bad that's where oh, i'm at so now yeah. i'm gonna go and finally yeah. Michael, I, I have two very small kids, and I'm finally getting say my, no more. I'm finally getting my TV back. <laughs> no, they okay. like Breaking Bad, and they finally can attend to watch it. They're three Dad, and five. They're very sure. You gotta watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Dad. It's all about meth. You wouldn't. It's kind of nice. To, it's kind of nice to get my TV back because you know they. they I have to watch Peppa Pig when I want to be watching Better Breaking Bad or something. <laughs> you watch the Amazing Adventures of uh, of Gumball? Yes, that's, that's an awesome are, show. I think you're, you're in there, right? What? Are no, you no, in no, there? No, no, no. It's just I, I stumbled upon it. It was on, on a plane actually yeah and it was they had a lot of channels and it was like what the hell is this really cute animation yeah and it's seriously funny and all the kids voices are done by actual kids right. and they're all yeah. great okay yeah that's a funny show <laughs> there's a, every once in a while you, you grab one where you, you don't mind watching because there is yeah. adult yeah. humor in there right <laughs> but when we were kids it was uh, rocky and bullwinkle that was uh, it, yeah. you know and my dad was like my god this is brilliant <laughs> oh really oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you ever uh, done any animation work yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I did some uh, 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 Pinky in the Brain and Tiny oh, nice. Toons, and those were very <laughs> Tiny fun Toons shows, was too. a fun show. Yeah, and that's a great bunch. They got these, you know, um, uh, Rob Paulson and, and Jess Arnell. Right. Jess Arnell is a brilliant voice guy who also does very accurate and very cruel impressions of singers. <laughs> okay. I mean, yes. <laughs> What's like, cruel about yeah, them? Yeah. Well, they're accurate. Oh. And they, all the all the, 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 the all the bad stuff is there, you know. And it's but it, it, he's brilliant. Michael Bolton. His Michael Bolton is pretty brilliant. <laughs> we're gonna have to we're gonna have to play that. We're gonna have to find yeah, that, play that, that yeah. tomorrow or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you're you're promoting Better Call Saul. I noticed I you weren't in the first episode of the second season. I was sir. not. I had the, I had the week off. Yeah, it was great. Do you be a panic? They're gonna kill you off. Like when you read a script, do you like okay? I don't like you. Like, like I know. okay, I'm alive through this one. I'm right. Good. I know. And I also I, I have this illness that. Uh, right. Yeah. If I get too near, you know, a, a dynamo, I'm done. So who knows? They could, you know, it's just I don't sass them a lot. Right. Because they, they yeah. have my fate in their hands. You're, yeah. You're playing uh, Chuck brilliantly. And, oh, thank uh, you very much. The, the scene where you're going to get the newspaper. Wow. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so intense. So yeah. intense. That, that was, woman who lives, who's in the window there yeah. across the street, she really lives there. Really? So, yeah. So that's the actual one. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. That's great. Said, Would you like, we'll give you, you know, we'll give you a day, day player rate and everything. She said, okay. And all she has to do is look out the window, but she, she approached it like she was playing Gertrude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and that's my motivation. But she was fine, you know, she was great. They worked her into the show. That's great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you, you took this without reading, which I was interested in. You took this without reading the script. I did. There was really? no script. Yeah. Yeah, they they would do, would not give me. I, I mean, I knew I wanted to work with those people. I was a big Breaking Bad fan, and uh, uh, Vince Gilligan. I'd worked with Vince uh, on uh, on X Files, and every time he had a new project, he always gave me a shout and say. And I was usually like here in New York or someplace doing a play or or just involved in something else. So this time it all just kind of fell into place. And uh, I said, yeah, of course I'm going to work with you guys. Yeah. Did you have any idea that that was the character? That it was no, no, no. I didn't even know what the character's name was. Wow. I knew that he was Jimmy's brother. Uh, and I knew that he had some kind of affliction. Right. So the nightmare was that I'd get there and they'd say, yeah, he has psoriasis, head to toe. <laughs> so we're going to get you into makeup starting at 3 a.m. Yeah. And we'll get you on the set at 9, and then you will have to start taking it off around 10.30. <laughs> that, yeah, I, I know people who have been through that kind of thing. Sure. Star Trek people. You know? <laughs> Star Trek people. Oh, the makeup chair nightmare where you're there oh, four Lord. hours before anybody yeah. else? Who we... straws up your nose, you know? Who were we talking about that recently? Was it? Uh, I know. It someone who's got to get there for three hours. It was hours. the zombie guys. Ryan, uh, the zombie guy. Uh, it might have been Walking Ryan Reynolds Dead. in uh, Deadpool. 
Michael Cudlow. No, wasn't it Walking oh, was it Dead? Michael, Michael from, from the, okay, Walking whatever. Dead. Uh-huh. But yeah, they all uh, talk about how they. I mean, you must be tired by the time you're ready to <laughs> I've go on set. That once I did a, a Star Trek, and it wasn't even the. It was two and a half hours, so it wasn't even the worst. But Tim Curry was in a movie called Legend, where he played the devil, basically, right? And including and with the horns and the hooves. He was eight feet tall. Wow. He, it was the first time they did the makeup. It was eight hours. Oh, my God. Eight hours. Eight hours. Wow. And what do you do? What Never do thought you? he'd long for the days of uh, Frankenfurter. I know, just throw exactly. a little makeup <laughs> on you and some thigh highs. <laughs> right. We didn't jerk off for that. <laughs> eight insane. hours. Can you sleep? I, I would assume they would let you sleep. I, I don't know. I'd go part insane. Of that. I would go insane. But you're being pampered the whole time. That can't be the worst thing. You're in the just laying. That's a there. long yeah, time you to sit can't there. Move. No. Come on. <laughs> what if you go to the bathroom? Oh, it's just terrible. Yeah. yeah. But well, you're really but, here. Let's be honest. We, uh, we want to talk about better cultural. But you're really here to promote used cars. One of the greatest. Right. That's right. <laughs> underrated comedies of Jimmy all turned time. time. You turned me on to used I cars. I love that movie more than I love most things. Well, I just went to his about three years ago. I went to a screening, and of course David Lander. He was my my pal and my 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 sure. my, my partner in in that movie and in, in a lot of other things in life, and uh, and boy, uh, um, Bob Gale was there, who was one of the writers. And is Frank uh, McRae alive? Graham. I don't know. I don't know. Frank, uh, I, I I have not run into him in a long time. He's the he's the black actor he's who was in he was Eddie Murphy's Hilarious. chief in Forty Eight Hours. Right. He's, oh, he's phenomenal, right. amazing funny. actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's did a lot of stuff. Last sighting of him was in the Maverick movie with um, Mel Gibson. What year is that? Like is that in the nineties? Fifteen years ago. Yeah, that's a long time. Okay. Maybe retired. So, uh, he may be. He was a lovely guy. He's, uh, yeah, he's still with us. He's oh, 71. Okay. 71. That was my first location, actually. It was uh, Phoenix, Arizona. It was the first time I went off to, to do a movie. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's uh, where you shot that? Yes. Oh, I love And Scott's that woman, tail. by the way, whose who top came off, that was, there's a rumor that she was in Hill Street Blues. Is that true or no? That's Is not true. Was she in Hill Street Blues? That was that be- that's not the rumor from Betty Thomas from Hill Street Blues oh, or no? Yes, it is. It is. Yes. Oh, okay. Who also directed the Howard Stern movie and the Brady Bunch movie that I was in. And uh, she's a terrific director. I didn't yeah. know that. Yes, I love which. It's so funny because like her, she gets caught in the hood ornament, and I, I think it's yeah. Oh uh, no, no, that's not Betty. Oh, Betty's, that's Betty's another stripper in in another part of that uh, part of you. Oh, cars. is that when she's dancing uh, in the car? Yes. Oh, I'm exactly. sorry. Okay. The other guy, I don't remember her name, but she was gorgeous. I love it. He goes, oh, she's caught in the hood ornament, and I think David Lennon goes, oh, don't you hate women? It was such a funny, <laughs> such a funny. Fucking <laughs> oh my god! Just a little behind the scenes. Uh, Steven Spielberg was the executive producer on that movie. Wow. And he, we we shot one whole thing of that sequence when, you know, they're wearing the Groucho glasses with the nose and the yes. thick mustache and everything. Originally, those were the penis glasses. Do you remember the penis glasses? I do, yes. yes. I've sat on a few. You, probably, <laughs> <laughs> you have. <laughs> In fact, I'm a little uneasy here in this chair. Uh, yeah, and so they shot it that way, and Spielberg saw it. He just hit the ceiling. He said, no, 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 no. It's not that kind of movie. Yeah, it's really? Made, made him reshoot it with just your, your regulation. Uh, oh, did Zemeckis direct that? Well, my, yes. He did. Okay. Yep. So that, what yeah. an amazing combination. It, it is, yeah. yeah. And Kurt Russell. Who Jack is, Warden? Jack Warden. God, I love that guy. Boy, he was great. He played two two crazy people in that. Yeah. yeah. One evil and one very good. Really, really funny movie. And who was yeah. the guy who played um, his partner? Garrett uh, Graham. Garrett Graham. That's yes, right. Who is a terrific actor. He... I, I believe he mostly lives in the in the east now, but uh, I did a lot of stuff with him. I did. Uh, I was just talking to, to uh, actually Mark Goodman outside, talking about uh, the Pitchell Players, which was this very loose aggregate of uh, improvisational actors in the mid seventies. And Garrett, that's how I got first got to know Garrett. Very funny man. Yeah, yeah that's such yeah. a great. It's one of those movies that never gets talked about with all these great comedies and uh, rare noise makes them. Well, you know what's weird about the way the only thing that's really dated about that film is that there's anything remarkable about titties on TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. At the time in 19, you know, it was 80, a big deal. It was sort of a big deal, you know, and it was sort of like, oh my God, what's happening? The world is ending, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's now it's eh, not so much. <laughs> well, know? they brought it back for a while. They they got rid of that in comedies. They they weren't going for the titties. Yeah. 
Yeah, and yeah that's, that's finally coming back. <laughs> I'm pro titty. I'll, I'll <laughs> go on record. Of course. It, it just brings you back to when you were a lot younger and that would pop up in a <laughs> yeah, comedy. Exactly. Yeah. It would make you very it happy. All, it would much, much would pop up. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys are thinking, but my ears are not garbage cans. Yeah. <laughs> Dog Day Afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a, a relative who used to say that? No, Dog Day Afternoon. Uh, oh, I guess oh, right, I, I, right. Miss, Mr. Mulvaney said fuck. Right. And they're like, he said fuck. And she's like, well, my ears are not garbage cans. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking banks being robbed. And she's worried about Mr. Mulvaney saying fuck. Oh, it's great man. how bad her priorities were. That's and a of great course, movie, isn't it? Oh, my God, yeah. And uh, the real so. Sonny Warchick died not long ago. I forget yeah, what his right, name yeah, was. Yeah. I think they're making it into a play. Aren't they doing it on Broadway? That could probably work. Yeah. Sure, it's yeah. one location. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would work. Are you still a New Yorker? Yeah. Oh. I'm about half the time. Yeah. I, my wife is doing a play here now. She's doing a musical at the uh, the public called Southern Comfort. Uh, nice. And uh, so I'm kind of here for that. She she opens on the 8th. Nice. I've she's been workshopping it for years, so I've seen the seen the show already. But now it's been kind of a big deal here in New York. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah well, there huh. she is. That's my wife. Yeah, with her little mustache. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. She <laughs> it's, 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 a true, it's a true story. It's right. a true story about a transgender uh, guy named um, Robert Ede. Wow. Uh, and it's 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 a heartbreaker. It's an amazing. It's a beautiful female play. to male or male female to male. To male yeah. Uh, a, a kind of an awesome guy, and uh, it's it's pretty great. Hurry, hurry! It's already sold out. That's but hopefully they'll move it to you know to some other theater, and you get another shot. That's some good makeup that's right there. Yeah, yeah, it's Michael. amazing. She's remarkable. Does she go home like that every once in a while? When I uh, ask her, to. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm feeling a little experimental, yeah. <laughs> just keep the chin spinach on, honey. <laughs> How's the leg? I remember yeah. reading about you oh, breaking yeah, a yeah. leg in New York. That's uh, three and a half years later. It's fine. <sighs> What what happened? You just stepped was, off a curb? No, I did not step off the curb, sir. I stood it, on the curb waiting for that the light car- to change. One guy decided that the yellow light was for him, and a woman decided that the yellow light was for her. She turned left in front of him, and he gunned it, and both cars kind of took me out. Oh. But uh, the ambulance was nice enough to take me to the hospital in which I had been born. Wow. <laughs> not just the hospital, but the same floor. Wow. Because <laughs> the floor I was on had been the maternity right. ward. So I looked out that window. I saw the first window I looked out, basically. Oh, wow. The same city, yeah. yeah. So it would have been a perfect like a place to so die. Much. Well, <laughs> I didn't let that cross my mind until months later. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. That could have been really poetic. Like, what, are the, what a great story that would have been. I mean, I'm happy you're here now, but it still would have been a good story. Born and died on the same floor. <laughs> that's crazy. That's even creepier. I didn't know you were on the on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's it. So there's no cautionary tale there. It's not. I can't say kids. Sure. Sure, and look both ways. You were doing everything. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, you just got to be careful. Yeah. That's all. And uh, what is David Lander's doing now? David Lander is um, uh, well, well does voiceovers and stuff, and and uh, he's you know he's mm-hmm. got MS, and and so he's not oh. <clears throat> physically not in great shape, but um, still maybe the funniest man in the world. And he's just waiting for baseball season, like the rest of us. You yeah, know, he's <laughs> the world's biggest Pittsburgh Pirates fan. And um, yeah, come on, guys, do it one once for the Daver. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, come close the last three seasons, yeah. but uh, now it's time. Is he from Pittsburgh? Push it through. Nope. No, New York City. But he he, just wait, he's from a- New York. He's a Pittsburgh fan. Well, he just when he was four years old, he liked his brother. His older brother was a big uh, baseball fan. And he just liked the sound of Pittsburgh Pirates. He just liked the alliteration. That's how it started. <laughs> and when he went off to college, he went to uh, Carnegie Tech in Pittsburgh, which is where I met him. And I think one reason he went there was cause to be near the Pirates. Right. <laughs> and indeed, I saw I saw a game with him at Forbes Field, which is where they Neat. used to play. And yeah, That's so I'm a Dodger cool. fan for my sins. I, I grew up in New York, of course. And uh, the first game, first baseball game I ever saw was. Um, Oh my God! 1956. I was like a tiny kid, and it was in color. It was great on TV. It's in black (laughs) and white, you know. And go there, there's green grass and everything. And I saw this kid, um, Henry Aaron. Wow! (laughs) Beat the crap out of us. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you, so you and David met in college, (laughs) like or or whatever. So did you audition for Laverne and Shirley together, or no? We didn't audition. We had been doing those characters for years, and oh. uh, and Penny Marshall was a big fan of those characters, and she got the wily idea, say, why don't we hire these guys, these 
these guys as writers, and maybe they can work their characters into the show. So we did work us into the first episode, and then we said, boy, this is easier than writing, isn't it? Sure. So, uh, yeah. So that's, that's so fascinating how, it happened. how things worked I out. I know. <laughs> I would you assume the know. whole time they had you in mind to be those characters. Yeah. No, well, Penny Penny knew. Penny knew, and when she had she had a party to kind of celebrate the fact that they had they just got to go ahead on this show, and her brother Gary and her, her, her father, uh, Tony, were you know producers on the show. Was this like 76? 75. Yeah, late 75. And... Um, so we were all invited to this party and a lot of the writers were there and everything. And Rob Reiner, who was married to Penny at the time, said, hey, do those guys, do those guys that you do. <laughs> so David and I did a little improvised little piece that we had never done before or since about the guys trying to decide whether or not to go to butler school <laughs> to become butlers. <laughs> and we have no idea. We, no, we can't get a quote from it because we don't remember it at all. <laughs> so we just kind of flew with it, and we got a lot of laughs. And the next Monday they said, come on in. We'll, uh, let's do this. That's amazing. Wow. And first of all, the, the the balls to do the character. Like if someone said, do do that character at a party, I'd be mortified. Like that was awful <laughs> of him to ask, and it just happened to work out. Right. That could have been a terrible story, too. What happened? <laughs> well, I mean, Rob Reiner told me to just do this character, and I went, you crickets. Head, and we had a fight and he threw me out. Crickets. <laughs> Could have happened. But, yeah, you know, that was ballsy you guys to do it. Did Gary Marshall make you guys play softball back then? I played one game. One. I'm, I'm not He loves his softball. Yes, he does. He loves his <laughs> basketball, too. But I, he loves you know, playing it still. Hector he... Elizondo is in all of his films, yeah. you know? And Hector always plays. Is it's, it would, there was a little basketball court set up, you know, a little uh, you know half court set up at Paramount. And you go past there, and there's Gary and Hector, you know, playing a little horse. But he's still <laughs> doing great. it. We yeah, had him in a couple years ago. He's still is in some senior, senior, senior league. Wow, still Bless playing. Heart, uh, so, oh yeah, he still gets out early there. 80s, no problem. And uh, still playing. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, great. remarkable guy. Right. We should talk about Better Call Saul a little bit. Okay. Yes, but right after we talk about planes, trains, and automobiles, yes. I have to ask uh, about that. That's the best. One the of the greatest great cop ever. of all <laughs> it time. Is. It's a beautiful comedy. And also, how great is Candy? We, oh, great. my God. Can't get Everything. enough of them. That scene, just you had such a great scene with them as the, as the cop just talking right. to yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so yeah, it's radio store. Ah. So slow. <laughs> just so slow yeah. and deliberate. Yeah, <laughs> so that was fun. Funny. We, uh, we shot it in Buffalo. They were all over the map. They really did a lot of traveling in that show. And uh, they just kept shooting and shooting and reshooting. But the day I went, it was kind of a beautiful day, kind of like today, you know. Yeah. And we shot the whole scene, and they kind of basically shot one side, mm -hmm. and they were going to turn around and do the other side. Overnight, it snowed a shit. <laughs> and so they had to shoot the whole thing. So they shot the whole thing in one day. Oh, wow. Much. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was fun working with those That's two. Great Did you know dudes. Candy at all? Too? I never met him. Yeah, I'd met him a couple of times before that, and uh, just totally... Just a major guy. I mean, lovely guy. And Steve is yeah. great. I, you know, I didn't know Steve terribly well, but uh, funny people. Steve yeah. Martin just did stand up for the first time in thirty five years. I know. I heard about that. I was there. For, did oh, you read you, his book? You were part I, of the show. I was supposed to do I, yeah. the show. He bumped Jerry me. had you booked, and they. Oh, I'm so happy that happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, was, it was actually such an honor. I mean, he was the first. But you were still there, right? I was there because. So tell us about it real fast. It was pretty great. He was. Uh, I was backstage with. Jerry, Tom Hanks, and Steve Martin before the show, and Steve's just Who's going... Who's going to pick up all these names? Is that crazy? I know, exactly. It's, so, it's one of those times you're just like, what am I doing I know. And then here? Steve Martin and Tom Hanks looked at Jerry and went, who's that? And he goes, no one. <laughs> he used to be the opener. <laughs> and uh, Steve was just going through his material, you know, and trying out his jokes backstage. And When did, when did he know? How, how far in advance did they... A while ago. Oh, it was a while in I, the yeah. works? I, I, yeah, like a month or so ago. Oh, they didn't just tell you when you got that would have been much better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, exactly. Could, I'm ready to go. Couldn't you um, have done it? <laughs> you could have done a few minutes, Tom. No, it's so book. special as Steve Martin. How did, it, how did it go over? The place, as soon as he came out, the place just exploded. Oh, of course. I mean, course. Steve Martin walking out in anything close to stand-up venue. Is did they announce him or did he just walk out? Uh, they announced him. Okay. And But the audience didn't know, and the announcer was voice of God, and they said, you know, Jerry's good friend, and then he paused. Steve Martin. Wow. And then pff, the place is. It'll be great crazy. they were all booing because they were Tom Papa fans. And they were like, we don't want him. We want Tom. I came here for Tom. And the material works. It was just, he yeah. Laughs. Yeah. It was just, you know, he, he did probably, you know, six, eight minutes with a 
you know, three of it being on the banjo. Right. And, uh, but he had some good jokes and there was one joke. I can't, I was trying to recall it last night where he actually had the Steve Martin cadence, you know, how he would do it and like yeah. pause and then exaggerate and exaggerate. It was, that was the, there was one bit that was like Steve Martin stand up, right. you know? But it was just... That's pretty awesome. Yeah, you know his awesome. book, right? Born uh, Standing Up? The best book ever. It's one of the best books about show business ever. Ever. Yeah. It's a, it's amazing. Yeah. I, it's one of the, you just You pick it up and you just can't put it down. No, like, it's, it's literally. Amazing. Yeah, that's great. I just found my next book. Oh, it's I was just great. Pitching it won't take you a book long. to read. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it, it really is, like you say, you can't, once you start right. it, you're... Great. Yeah. yeah. It just it. flies. Yeah. But that's pretty special. That's cool you were there. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. So, and it was the first comedy album I ever, I mean, you know, and uh, just to be in the room, like, as he's getting ready to go on, was just, you're just trying not to. Oh, well, his video online and everything. We'll have to check that out later. Oh, yeah. Did you ever do stand-up oh, really? or no? Not really. I, I uh, would get up with a guitar and do songs on Snappy Patter, you know, and most of the songs were funny songs, but. Yeah. That's boy, you gotta have a certain kind of balls to do that. I just, I like having company when I'm up there. And amplifiers, preferably, you know, just so that, you know, the noise level just shocks people. I guess we're enjoying this. I don't know. Right. It seems like it's over. <laughs> yeah. Do people call on you, on your improv skills? I mean, you're so known for being loose and improvisational. Like in better, in, in better call oh. salt, not you, Jimmy. <laughs> Uh, do they give you room naturally, or do they? Kind Not of, on that show. No, no, no. no, no. That's that. This got some it. serious writers there. Yeah, I mean, and they're they're nailing it down to the last punctuation mark. Right. You know, doing Chris Guest movies, of course, it's all improvised. Right. You know. Yeah. And but you could do a lot of homework. I mean, you 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 kind of know what the scene needs to deliver mm -hmm. story wise, and uh, and you've you know you've kind of. You know, worked with the people you're working with. You kind of just chatted with them and everything. Right. But no rehearsal. You know, they just switch the camera on and go. And go. Who walked us through that? There was somebody we interviewed that was, uh, it was, um, oh my God, Christopher, uh, oh my, I'm spacing on his name and no one's going to help me. Uh, um, Higgins? Eugene? No. Guest. No, not Christopher Guest. It wasn't Levy? Oh, oh wait a minute. Maybe I know who you mean. Yes. Other Chris. Oh my God, Chris Elliott. Oh, for oh, God's I, sake. God, good I old love Chris that Elliott. Man. I love that man. <laughs> I, I met, I, when I first met, <laughs> Jimmy I got first, it. you got it though. I first met Chris, we were on SNL together. And, uh, the first time I met him, I said, I gotta tell you this, I met your father before you did. <laughs> Which is true. My father worked with, with, uh, Bob and Ray, no. uh, briefly when I was six years old. And oh, I wow. met Bob and Ray, and I, I already was a fan because they were on the radio every yeah. day, you know. And uh, they were kind of awesome. That's, That's amazing. I them. Yeah, Bob just died a, a couple of weeks ago. No, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't even hear that. You don't know Bob and Ray? I don't know. Oh, oh my God. God. Lord. Hilarious. Oh, yeah. Go to uh, archive.org and just type in Bob and Ray. These guys were amazing. All in brilliance. They never wrote a thing down. Really? Everything. Jeez. And they just had, they had each other's... They had each other's backs to such a degree. You know, they started in Boston right after the war, and they were on New York radio and on and off. And uh, really they, smart. They did a Broadway show, very smart and very kind of, you know, like like widely heart, stolen kinda. from as well. Were they being? Oh, were, yeah. they, were they doing sketches or just conversation? No, or? they would do. They would do characters, you know, and their characters weren't all that different from one another. <laughs> right? You, know, you knew who, who was Bob. It wasn't like, oh my God. You know, man of a thousand voices. It was. They were just two, always two funny characters. Yeah, uh, some brilliant stuff. So you listened as a kid. You, I did. I did. Yeah. As a six-year-old, you already knew. Yeah. You liked. Them. And Chris is Chris is a genius. Chris is like seriously brilliant. Man. We had him on once. We loved him. And his yeah. daughters. Back. And his daughters are amazing. Was he only on once? Yeah. I thought it was more than that. Maybe. I thought he was on more than once. Maybe twice. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. Not a lot. Love in the end, man. but did it take you a while to kind of find this character? I mean, you could have been so. Broaden over the top with this. Yeah, I mean, it's you play it such a. There's such you're so fragile in it. Oh, good. good. It really yeah. is so. Well, listen, the guy who wants to be the master of the universe that he used to be, right? But it's all falling apart. You know, it, it, it's it's an interesting thing. I mean, it's an interesting character. Yeah, it's kind of what we all deal with in various to varying degrees. You know, really. Yeah. Uh, so uh, hanging on. Yeah, hanging on and. <laughs> And also seeing, watching the world fall for my brother's shit 
when my whole life has been plagued by it. Right. You know, that's, yeah. that's very playable. Right. I don't know whether you got brothers, you know, oh, yeah. I do not. Yeah. yeah. I was, Holy I was the brothers. older brother who had his shit together and, and, you know, my parents were like, you know, could you talk to your brother? Cause I don't know. <laughs> really? Mom, he's got his own thing. You know, he's, yeah. he's, he's like, he, he'll be fine. He's got his own thing. You know, yo, she, my, your sister has, could she talk to, okay, mom, but she's got her own thing. You know, it's like, and, and of course that, you know, not that I'm all that wise, but that really is the only wise answer to that, you know, right. is, is to be, look, I'll, I'll be glad to say, hey, man, I believe in you. That's right. the best I can do. Their com the, the, com the uh, relationship between Jimmy and Chuck is very complicated. Yes. Yeah, it really gets, yeah, and it changes throughout the first season, too. Yeah, At least well, what you see of it changes. Right. The, by the end of the second season, you will have seen a lot more and heard a lot more anecdotally. And uh, uh, it doesn't excuse anything, but yeah. it, certainly, uh, it certainly focuses in. Yeah. <laughs> Just let us really know. Does brilliant. Chuck get better in season two? <laughs> <laughs> Define better. <laughs> He's on his way. At the end of yeah. season one, he was on, yeah, on his way. Good. Yeah, it's uh, getting some of his act back together. Yeah. Two steps forward, one you're, step back. You're a great actor, man. I mean, oh, you're playing, you. you're playing you so that much. character brilliantly. Well, I'm doing my best. For Thanks. real. Uh, what kind of relationship do you have? With, uh, did you have with your brother or have with your brother? Um, and did he go into acting or the well, entertainment he was, field? He was a very funny writer and uh, improviser. And he was also, he was, uh, he was <clears throat> in a company called, people in, listening in Austin, Texas, will know a company called Esther's Follies which was kind of a satirical vaudeville show. So they had, you know, magicians and, and clown, you know, uh, um, uh, drag acts and all this stuff. But they also had a lot of political satire. And my brother was a big political satirist at the time. He's passed away years ago, but um, smoked too many cigs. But, uh, uh, you know, he, he was a very funny guy, but he was funny in his own way. I mean, he had his own thing, like like we all, right. like I keep, keep saying, yeah. Yeah. But uh, a lot of it stems from my father, who was very, <laughs> very funny man. My my friends all thought he was insane. Did they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he would give him a ride home, you know, and it would be me and my dad in the front seat, and they're sitting in the back seat. And my father's just very totally straight man. Just tell me when to turn. And my friend would say, turn here. And he meant the next street. But my father would turn up on somebody's lawn <laughs> just, just to make me laugh. <laughs> my friends thought, is there something wrong with your friends? <laughs> yeah, he's funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's really funny. And he, had, he had very little patience with my friends who didn't get it. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's great. It's like Mike Myers' dad. Uh, <laughs> Mike, Mike told me that his father said if he decided that his uh, a friend wasn't funny, he said, get rid of him. <laughs> we can't do anything. We don't need That's him around. I kind of know the impulse. <laughs> we're we're uh, being told you got to go. You got other, uh, other press to a do. more visits here and this amazing. Uh, you got to come back. We're just getting started here. Anytime, Michael. guys. Anytime. Michael McKean, Lovely to meet so both great. you, gentlemen. You made uh, me laugh many times in the past. You're so great. You, I'm still on the fence. But <laughs> it's okay. Uh, better Call Saul, of course, Mondays at 10 on AMC. Um, great. Michael so McKean, great. thank you so MJ much. MJ McKeon, that's M-C-K-E-A-N, M-J-M-C-K-E-A-N, all one word on Twitter. And Better Call Saul is phenomenal. I, I didn't know we had, I haven't so seen much, guys. part I love of it. season two yet, so oh, I'm so glad lucky. I binge watched it. It's dark. It. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. And how mad are people? We didn't even talk about Spinal Tap next time you come back. I know. We'll it's it's we, probably we really. have in the past, though. We've done a little Spinal Tap with you yes, over the indeed. years. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah uh, all right. We can't. Well, he's got to go for real. Mike, hey thank you so much. You're Thanks. so welcome, guys. I think we're Good done, luck. too. Tom Poppa, you coming back Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. All right. Good and uh, to Tom Poppa, I'll get the plug in here. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Friday and Saturday at the Laugh Boston. I'm going to be in Boston. It's yes. going to be wicked cool. And the podcast is still doing uh, very well. Come to Poppa. Right. And uh, your sourdough bread is sourdough going bread great. tips for anybody that needs to know. And uh, <laughs> Jimmy's taking a picture. Jimmy, uh, we'll give his plugs in a second. Yeah, I, I, I like Jimmy's hat. We're talking about the sure. other Jim Norton, who's a seventy-year-old actor, who is a really great actor, and I really hope he gets his Google results mixed up with mine the way I do, because I go on Google and I'm like, no, I'm not in of mice and men. Uh, I will be in Red Bank coming up, and I also That's have Huntington is sold out. Ow. And then uh, yes, the Count yeah. Basie. Yeah, the Basie. That's yeah, the right. Basie. And then I have one more, which is the uh, Indianapolis. Yes, Indianapolis. You're gonna be in Indianapolis Walmart, for the New first Jersey. time. The first time people will come to Indianapolis to see little Jimmy. That's pretty. Cool. Thank you, guys. All right. JimNorton.com. Uh, we're done. We'll see you tomorrow. Awesome. Good Bye. show.